What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny's <laughs> Batman in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every theatrically released movie in the Batman. Every You know what I'm talking about, right? That includes Catwoman here. All right? You can watch this show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games you can watch it later on youtube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com if you want it as a podcast guess what you can do that too go to your favorite podcast service search for kind of funny reviews and we'll be right there for you you can get the show ad free by going to Shoulder, patreon.com gonna get tired eventually greg yeah <laughs> i can do this all day i'm like Captain yeah, america yeah. Yeah, patreon.com slash kind of funny to get the show ad free uh just like our patreon producers james davis at james davis makes and andrew feisner did uh the show's brought to you by manscaped keeps and bespoke posts but we'll get to that later i guess now it's time to introduce our crew first we have andy cortez good morning everybody we have nick scarpino i'd like to issue an apology to everyone from last week uh because i thought it would be hilarious to encourage everyone to watch this film and it happened <laughs> And I got halfway through it, and no joke, I was like, I got to apologize to the guys for this. I feel partially responsible for this, and this partially. thing was you feel an partially responsible. I feel partially responsible for being a human being and allowing this abomination <laughs> of a film to happen. We have Kevin Coelho. In what ways, Greg, are you like Captain America? Just mm-hmm. so that we can do this all day. Do it all day. It's I, I understand yeah. you're not oh, a big you're American not a big fantasy. MCU fan. You fucking phony. If it doesn't have a yeah. wand in it, you're not about it. All right. But Captain America like has a very favorite line. He says, "I can do it all day, yeah, baby." Graphic know. design is my passion. Uh, that that voice coming from somewhere <laughs> is Greg Miller. <laughs> you want to explain the drawing, Greg? I, okay, no. It, it explains itself. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> It's very the clear what it is. The, the, the explanation. Say, no, nah, this is the Mona no. Lisa, right? Wait, Tim, She's do you not lady. do you not get the reference? He wasn't here for that. No, he wasn't uh, here for that. So the the, the, the drawing is the exp- explanation for the drawing is not going to be nearly as funny as what Greg just did. There it is again. Thank you. For I that, mean, Greg. what is the drawing? Because like, here's the thing: just an artist's the artist can do whatever the fuck they want in terms sure. of meaning and stuff, but sure. it's what the, the, the viewers, the partakers of uh, the art goers take from okay, it. Hold on. We can see the Twitch chat. I can see the Twitch chat. Twitch chat. What is this? What I is mean, this I, a drawing of? I now, didn't on, know let, what it let, was. Hold on. Let the Twitch chat sound off. Tim is you're making a great point. Fine art can be seen in a million different ways. I'm a lot like a Joker and <laughs> Batman. Or you're a lot like a lot of stuff. <laughs> 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 one day he's Captain America. America. One day he's the they Joker. <laughs> Artemis Vex it. gets it right there. Three thing, three finger review. This is the exactly. Nick three finger scale. He needed a exactly. graphic. I made it. There it is. Good, yeah. good, good, bad. This would have taken bad. Andy fourteen days. All right, look at me. I drew it. I'm ready to go. <laughs> God, I hate that sound. You know? <laughs> God, I don't know why damn. I feel like it's built up. I feel like we haven't podcasted together in so long. It's, and been, it's a just while. been a weekend. You know what it's I mean? It's been a while. Well, I missed you guys. Last week. I really do. <laughs> Anyways, oh ladies and gentlemen, today we are talking about Catwoman, a 2004 American superhero film loosely based on the DC Comics character of the same name. <laughs> Very loose. Very loose. Oh, she's, wait. She's the one from the Batman movies. <laughs> oh, shit. Did it not feel like someone watched Spider-Man and they're like, let's yeah. do the Catwoman version of that. And they were well, just like, but like someone else was like, that's not how, and they were like, shut up. Yeah. John has a really good idea, and we're going to let it go. John, let John no, talk. I feel like there is also the thing of like, all right, let's watch Batman Returns. All right, uh, we have to keep the thing where the cats bring her back to life. That's like, we're going to mm-hmm. start a cat woman cinematic universe, yep. and that needs to be the through line. All right, you got it? We're going to show hey. these other cat women that we can go back in time, show their thing too. Just a, uh, how is this connected to any of the Batman not. movies? It's not. It's not. I mean, you saw Michelle Pfeiffer in there, didn't you? So yeah, there's there's one little photo of Michelle Pfeiffer in the in Great. when the photos drop yeah. on her, thus when implying dro- that Great. when it was ha- when it was building up and she's seen I, I told Jen I'm like wait for it wait she's like what am I waiting for I hate this movie wait for <laughs> it and I then it happened for? and I'm like that one image is the I whole reason we have to fucking do this this is yeah. why we have to fucking <laughs> do this I don't make the movie, rules it's yes, almost you do like, and you had made the correct rule that we wouldn't watch this no yeah. the, and then guess what I did last night I wasted my fucking time. Theatrically released, and it was. It was. Yeah. What can I, I say? Saw the Wikipedia theaters. doesn't lie. I like saw this in theaters, Nick? No, no. I saw this on HBO oh. like three years like later, it. and I watched 20 minutes of it, and I was like, what a piece of shit this movie is. And I then uh, glad. I was I'll like, never I'm never going to watch this again. <laughs> yep. I'd like to imagine that some DC executive somewhere 
like told the people, all right, we got to make a Batman or we got to make a Catwoman movie. But I, I got to go. I have I have to go on leave of absence for a couple months. So you guys movie, got this. Though. You know who Catwoman is, right? Yeah, you guys get it. I'll, I'll come back. I'll watch it. And at the very, very end was just like, yeah, now this is like uh, this will be a DC Comics kind of thing. I don't know what this makeup stuff is. I don't know why Chris, why not Chris Pratt? What's his name? Benjamin Pratt. Benjamin Pratt. Benjamin, Pratt. Benjamin Pratt. Yeah. Benjamin yeah. Pratt. Why are they playing no, basketball? Brad? What's like what's Pratt, the Pratt. whole Brad, yeah. Brad, yeah, Brad no. with a B, yeah, and what? No, it's and and homegirl from um, <laughs> Brad, yeah, pre Brad. <laughs> I don't I've know, lost man. the joke. I don't know his name yeah, anymore. Yeah. Either. <laughs> okay. uh, Brad, Brad, B R A T T. Oh. Brad. He went uh, to the same high school as me, Lowell High School. Did what? Like really? Mm -hmm. Is he still living the bed? So much. I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Kevin, so uh, you're though. still you're getting that echo problem we had during games daily. Weird. Okay. Slightly. Yeah. Um, mm. I will. I will say. Um, and I'm a huge Benjamin Bratt fan, obviously from Law and Order. Uh, obviously. and bum, bum. I just feel like he got a raw deal on this because if you <laughs> said to me, "Hey, Nick, you're gonna star in a Halle Berry Catwoman movie," I'd have been like, "Sign me up." But, but I, I think it was wh whoever said the, the the executive joke. Andy, was that you? Nail yeah. right on the head. It's like people never watched a DC movie and had no idea what Catwoman was because D walked through and was like is she like is this really true to the origin better? story of catwoman like is she supposed to be like really like a cat and i'm like no she's just a cat burglar who dresses like a cat kind of because she robs <laughs> shit in this there's no at no point and greg correct me if i'm wrong because i've never read any of the comics <laughs> but at no point has any has have a, a a tribe of prehistoric cats from egypt brought a woman back to life after she got a toxic dump spill all over her body yeah that's that more correct? some black adam kind of shit hey, there, there's a debate mm -hmm. that was happening between uh kevin and i about this cat how big Meow. was the cat cat's huge Ca Midnight? Oh, tim i'll say Midnight? this i will say this what do you mean yeah. i think i, I no think it was a cats. normal size cat but when the cgi projected <laughs> this cat this fucking tiger <laughs> on top of her chest it looked like she was being mauled by a goddamn ocelot like this this cat was gigantic in the cgi when she's laying there after being washed up ashore like it was really really big tim i had the same fucking thought i had the same so thought. Big. wait uh, tim what i don't think we had an I argument really I'm realizing now it was Gia that I was talking to. She was like, "This the cat was huge." I'm oh like, yeah. "No, it was just a cat." But like yeah. the angle made it look huge. But it, it was the same cat we've seen. I don't think so, it got bigger. <laughs> I really feel like they made like this movie was supposed to be like Egyptian Ma curse or something, and then like last minute they were like, "Fuck, we can just call it Catwoman and it's good." Because it, well, it so just... here's the thing: this movie was released on July 19, 2004. When Warner Brothers canceled a Batman vs. Superman film scheduled for 2004, the studio quickly decided to produce Catwoman as a replacement to hit the, the date that they had held. Oh, my God. <laughs> that <laughs> shows. Directed by Pitoff? What Pitoff. was that about? Yeah, yep. that guy's name came up, and, and Jen's like, who's that? And I'm like, I have no Pitoff. idea. He, when you have a one-word name, I'm like, oh, you usually you're a big deal, and I know who you are. <laughs> Yeah. 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 No. He, this guy was like, I'm going to go. His his full name is like Pitoff, Arang uh, Nakowskikov, or whatever. And then I made that up. But yeah. then he was like, This is going to be the movie that makes me. And I want to be known as Pitoff because he saw Mick G and was like, Mick G is crushing the fucking game with just the, you know, the smaller word. People need to remember Pitoff. And then someone's like, Maybe if they you want them to remember you, you can make a movie that doesn't have a jump cut every fucking three oh, seconds. God, we want to be intense and get. visceral. Mm -hmm. It was nauseating, dude. And by the, the way, it's not a movie; it's an experience. <laughs> Let it in. It they is raw. Have, it is unfiltered. They should Usually have a, a seizure warning. They should have a seizure warning <laughs> in this movie. Like no joke, dude. When there are when they're doing the basketball scene, and that it's was just one of the many scenes where so it's bad. just like it's crazy movement, and like oh my god, it was so hard to watch, dude. It's it was so, so it's also it's one of those things, Andy, where I like my sports movies when you shoot them to be as close up as humanly possible, so I can't see what's going on on the court. You know, generally, like you remember when we walked, we all talked about the Last Dance. Remember when uh, how much better it would have been if all you could see of Michael Jordan were, was just the lower part of his body and his hands as he bounced the ball. As the they shot this, just this. They shot the whole thing close up in in steady cam, and then they made her do. No and this is the problem with all the fights too. Is like a lot of the fight sequences, they just cut around the action, and it loses all the frenetic energy. You can't see any of the choreography, and the, it just completely takes you out. That and the fact that she's running around like a damn cat. 
And it's so Meow. fake looking. Anytime they cut to the cat, it has that. It has the Spider Man one crawling up the wall problem. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Wow, who thought that was going to be a good idea? I and don't not under- take you out of the movie. I don't understand why so many of the scenes were unnecessarily CGI. Like her walking around in like the leather pants. What, what did they make? The like you mean the very very end, the final shot. No, I mean, but it was even earlier than that. Like when she goes oh, okay. to, like, she gets her second leather outfit. And like the yeah, back the of her legs <laughs> are all cut up, and it's yeah. just like, it's, did some executive think, "Fuck, that is not sexy enough. We have to add more yes, skin." That's ex- that's exactly what they thought. The the whole point of this movie was to show off as much as of Holly Berry's uh, Holly Berry's uh, uh, body as humanly possible, and at some point, nobody thought to maybe make a plot. In the movie. See, but here's the thing. There was a debate on were those holes in her pants or was that yeah. paint on top of the pants? No, I think they were. I think they were torn. No, holes. they were she had mesh inside of though. They were torn, what? but she had, she was wearing like t- there was like tights on the inside. Well, I mean, but it and was all CG, side? right? Well, well she's no, def- she, she definitely walking, wears that costume at one point. Yeah, her walking uh, in a few of those scenes were CG. But Kevin, what you're confusing it with was the fact when she's standing there, they couldn't ask Halle Berry just to jump off the thing. So anytime she has to bend down in the leather pants, they have to cut the CG. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure she burst right out of those fucking things. They're so tight. <laughs> so this movie is directed the- by Pitoff, John Christoph Pitoff Kumar. Pitoff's in the little forget. in the little so quotes not there. Even close to what Nick said, huh? He's a uh, a French no, you- visual. <laughs> A French visual effects supervisor and director, notable for Vidoc, which is a French art film, and Catwoman. Just those two things. Uh, in 2004, Pitoff made his English, his English language debut with the Hollywood film Catwoman. Uh, the film was critically panned and is considered one of the worst movies of all time. Yeah, and Pitoff was awarded the Razzie Award for Worst Director for the film. Huh. As was, uh, didn't I mean, Halle Berry win one too for Best Actress? Yeah, she I think did. she was really she mad did. about that, right? Uh, the oh, film <laughs> received oh. seven Golden Raspberry Award nominations and one in the categories of, congratulations to them, Worst Picture, yeah. Worst Actress, mm-hmm. Worst Director, and Worst Screenplay. Many critics consider it to be one of the worst films of all time. Halle Berry became one of only six actors in history to possess both an Oscar and That's a amazing. Razzie. Yeah. After wow. her win wow. for her infamous performance wow. in the movie, she also became the first to accept their Razzie in person, oh. walking out on stage proudly holding both her Oscar and Razzie. <laughs> what? She, oh, gave a short, awesome. she gave Good a short baller. acceptance speech. I'd like to thank Warner Brothers for making me do this god awful piece of shit movie. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. That's <laughs> it, as fuck. It is, uh, I mean, this is one of those movies that has got to give you hope if you're an up and coming filmmaker, because if this can get made, like. Uh, th- this level this movie just on a whole other level of bad when it comes to just everything like i don't i don't think there's anything redeemable about this movie there's a lot of just moments where i laughed really hard because of just the silly like sequences that were happening funny lines what a perfect perfect whatever the fuck that How, like but like she did so it so much, so much it harder terrible. and so then much it worse to. <laughs> Yeah, so much yeah. harder, Kevin. Like, what about the part where she walks into the, the restaurant and gets distracted for five minutes because of the fish tank? She's God. a cat. She's got a cat. Cat. But like, I want to talk cat, a little bit about my, my favorite thing in the movie. Oh, the my favorite thing in the movie oh, is oh, Wait, Is this the secret to light? Is this the secret to light? This song. Secret to light. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, we have podcasts within a podcast within a podcast within a podcast that often keep us excited, excited, excited. And one of them is called Gotham's Finest, The Secret Delights. This is where we pick something from the movie that we didn't expect to like and caught us off guard and we really enjoy. In the 1966 Batman, Joey and Gia loved that Catwoman had a Russian costume and Adam West small nipples. Then it was the Prince soundtrack for the 89 one. Then it was the Penguin Army for Returns. For Phantasm, Kevin loved the motorcycle designs. I loved the no. And Andy loved the Alfred stash in Batman Forever, Kevin and Andy love Drew Barrymore, and in Batman and Robin, uh, Gia and Joey loved red boobs, and Kevin loved the gorilla dance. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, so, what I love about this movie is actually just going back to the normal podcast we do here of in review where I go through all the stats. It's the music, music by Klaus Badelt. Now, here's the thing this is one of the worst music scores in the history of movies, <laughs> and it was made by the guy that did Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. What the fuck? This guy. Caribbean? Caribbean? Yeah, and I, I can never say it. that's one of those Tim words. You no, know I what I mean? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'm right. I don't know if I'm right. No, you I, are. I, He's I very wrong. Guarantee I am wrong. Guarantee I'm wrong. Ask him for a glass of milk. What I do know is that that soundtrack for Pirates is one of the all time bangers. 
of movie scores. And then you have this. And I don't know how much attention you guys paid. I don't know if you guys oh, watched I, this movie. Not, and I staying along because all it is is vocalizations. That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know if you guys had subtitles on for this, but it we makes didn't. this movie an even better experience because you get to then pay attention to what's actually being vocalized, which is a combination of no more than five words. It's either ooh, come on, yeah, or I'll, let's I'll go. Yeah, come on. The entire time. Ooh. What you say? Come on. Come on. And then just like beats playing. No matter what the fuck's going on in the scene, it's the same shit. And I'm like, did they just hire a vocalist to come in? Yep. And they're just, she's like, what am I, what do you want me to sing? And they're like, I don't know. Just do something. Okay. Uh, what is his name? Pilaf, Pitoff. He walks yeah. in and he's, he's like, listen, Catwoman isn't a movie. All right. It is a transcendent experience. You, think of pyramids. Think of ancient Egypt. Think of cats and let that, let the sand of time blow through your mind. Play it. <laughs> sand <laughs> and he walks of time. Out of the room. <laughs> That's what it was. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, lo- I, I immediately like, picture the the meme of the producer like you know that meme that's been popping up it's like yeah this sounds fucking terrible ship that shit like <laughs> sounds, <laughs> yeah fuck yeah this is fucking shitty um the the not only the score tint but we got some hooba steak we, we got, did we got we the did. hooba steak baby out of the blue they were there ready to go yeah oh shout great. out to the stank man but no yeah. real talk secret to light gotham's finest i gotta I give it to the score because the commitment Agreed. to the it went so through being bad that like it somehow came out the other side for me where i was stoked the next time it started playing and i was like let's go man commit to this shit good for you klaus badelt good for I you felt, I, I felt worse for no nick said that he felt wor- he felt really really bad for benjamin bratt i felt really really bad for alex borstein right because she's been voicing lois Lois her whole she's been voicing lois her whole career and family guy she was on mad tv for a couple years and this had to have felt like okay this might propel me to be sort of the silly kind of yeah i could be the guy in the chair for catwoman right here right this Mm -hmm. could be my sort of moment or maybe this becomes a film franchise and you gotta wait you really think you really think she could have been like the guy in the chair she could have kind of been like catwoman's sidekick it, it's possible. It's possible, Greg, because you got to assume that, like. <laughs> <laughs> How did you not know, Andy? How did you not know? I love Greg so much. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rock and Robin, the podcast within a podcast where we rank the Robins. Andy's the insulted by this. Universe. Look at him. Look at his face. So He's insulted. Far. So far, it's number one, Batman Forever's Robin. Number two, the 66 Robin. We didn't rank Batman and Robin Robin because we were angry at each other. Where do we want to rank at, uh, Lois Griffin as a Robin, as a sidekick here, Andy? Uh, well, she was sick the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I think so low, right? But she, she was, was. She gave good advice. She wanted to yeah. hook up Benjamin Bratt and her. She was, she was doing her thing. She was, she was a confidant. You know what I mean? She was the guy in the chair. She, we got some calls going on there. Every time he kept cutting back to us, like she's still in the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> for tests, for tests. And she's well, on she the got phone. That face cream like, early. She's using their phones. She's trying to fuck the doctor. It's just like yeah, I just I felt so bad. Well, like, for she, that. Well, she Let's got to fuck the doctor, right? Something. Yeah, yeah, she banged the dog. Yeah, she did. Oh yeah, at, that's the, right, at that's the end right. they were they were at the, at the house. Character development, mm-hmm. and it's that okay. thing too where like they they play fast and loose a bit with the timeline on this. But yeah, the fact she was in the hospital for so long, and then at the end of the movie, she is clearly in a committed relationship with that doctor, where yeah. she is just reading the newspaper in his house while he does whatever at the kitchen table. It's like that's not like after a one night stand. No. That's not after your first week of dating. Like that is like when you're just committed to each other. She needs somebody to pay off those hospital bills because she was there for four it's months. True. It's like, true. It's true. That's a lot. Of money, that's a big hospital. So, I'm right gonna here. say right now, I put her at number two ab- below <laughs> Batman Forever's Robin, above 66 Robin, because I really enjoyed Lois Griffin in this movie. Don't try to, don't try to actually put a fucking ranking on this. That's yeah. what I, mean. I, I, second, I second that vote. Andy, I second that Kevin's vote. Kevin's with me. All right. Uh, hands up if you think she that Lois Griffin in the movie Catwoman is a better Robin than the 1966 Robin. Okay. I raise my Absolutely hand. Absolutely not. Absolutely okay, not. Nick is the only one who votes against it. Who thinks that she's better than Batman Forever's Robin? Tim Absolutely and Andy not. raised their hands. She so that puts Lois Griffin. She, has Griffin. she, she, was, was, she, was, she was literally what? her whole she's, job in this is to make sure that Halle Berry gets, gets with it. Benjamin Bratt. And then she doesn't at the end. At the end, she's like, I got a whole other life. When I want to be good, I'll be good. But sometimes Kitty wants to be bad. I'll be bad. And I'm like, are, are you a good, bad guy? And I'm good, good guy. And I'm what are good. you? 
She's Catwoman. Are you? Don't you understand? That's the crux of Catwoman. Yeah, she, it's, she's like free. the it's Egyptian him. stuff. She's free. Yeah, I, 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 Andy. I would love to imagine that Alex Borstein was really, really <laughs> late, could not get to the movie premiere, got there about an hour and a half late, walked in at the very, very end when, when credits are about to roll, and Catwoman's <laughs> shutting, and she's like, this is just the beginning. And Alex thinks, wow, this is the start, of a, this is the start of a trilogy. X-Men <laughs> yeah. 1, And, X-Men and I'm, sitting in my be- I'm sitting in my bed, and I hear a Halle Berry say that. I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> uh, now, before not, we get over. too yeah. far off track on one of our little tangents, while we're in the podcast within a podcast, let's talk about Bell of the Batman. This is where we rank the love interests in the Batman cinematic universe. Okay. We have okay. to put Benjamin Bratt, aka Tom Lone, on this list. Tom Tom Lone. Lone. <laughs> what a terrible name. Why is your name? We don't Tom like, we don't like Tom Lone. Time. Uh, Tom, Tom, Tom Lone. It's sucks. terrible. Apparently, <laughs> the list is number one, Vicky Vale, 89. Number two, Andrea from Phantasm. Number three, Catwoman from Returns. Number four, Chase Meridian Bank from Forever. And number six, Russian Catwoman uh, from 1966. Uh, Benjamin Bratt, a delight in this movie. I'm just going to say it. An upstanding cop. He, he, you know, he does his best here. He does his best with not much he, to work he with. He won't let kids play with guns. That's a kind of a pro, right? He teaches Get basketball. It. Tim Gettys from kind of uh, uh, Just like he does his best. Does his best include jumping off the top of a Ferris wheel? What was his plan? To go down there and like how like how does Did he you know how it what, what, what do you mean? Tim, what was his plan? He day. saw you saw his plan. He, he looked down the, there. He saw the gears going crazy, and he's like, "These stupid inbred thing. carnies <laughs> don't <laughs> understand. They need to take a wrench and shove it in there." I grew up. Now here's an interesting thing, and I'm not. I understand. Where are we going? Where I is understand. This? I'm playing fast <laughs> Wait, and loose. Is with this Tom Kansas? Long. Are we paying a fucking shit? I understand. I'm playing fast and loose with Tom Long, but as we know. Tom Long. Tom DeLong. <laughs> Tom DeLong. As we know. When, when's the last time we saw Benjamin Bratt on Indian Review? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? When's the last time Doctor we saw Benjamin Bratt? Doctor Strange. Oh, we saw him in Doctor what? Strange. Oh, and if right, you recall yeah. in the, the post credit scene for Doctor Strange, what uh, is Benjamin Bratt doing? Anybody? 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 He's in a workshop. He's in a workshop with tools. Oh, right. Do we think that Tom Long is in fact in the multiverse and that is who he was wow. in the MCU movie, Doctor Probably. Strange? Probably. Yes. Catwoman There's not, not really question. in the DC cinematic universe, right? There's one Michelle Pfeiffer photo, but again, it's a multiverse thing. Maybe, and again, Doctor, Sh- again, everybody, you're like, that's a stupid thing. Different companies. Everybody, everybody, stick with me. What's yep. the next Doctor Strange talk called? In the multiverse of Madness. Of madness. Yep. What, of course, was, <laughs> Nick, was uh, so Tom close. Long in <laughs> Doctor Strange. He was also a sorcerer, meaning he was doing the portal shit, too. Maybe he did this. Maybe he got pulled through. Tilda Swinson showed up, bald head. She was like, Tom Long, saw you got screwed over by Catwoman. Long. Come with me through this door. And he's like, all right. And he went through, wow. right? And then she's like, I'll leave you. And he's like, that was weird. And then he gets his back hurt, and then he ends up on the mountain. He gets the Doctor Strange power. He's like, oh, it's you again. Maybe that's how it all gets connected, guys. Do we think and, about this? And Greg, 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 madness. Rhymes with catnip. Oh, shit, dude. No, but it does rhyme with Katniss, and that is a Hunger Games reference. Hunger Cat- Games in review coming soon. <laughs> wow. Smitty oh, Bad Call it goes, extrapolates even further. Didn't he play basketball in Doctor Strange? Yes, oh, he did. Shit, he oh, shit, he did. Yes, wow. he did. Wow. It's, it's crazy to think that a character would want to play one of uh, America's favorite pastimes. They just, it's, it's, you know what I mean? That's baseball. Budget of a hundred million, a box office of eighty two point one million. I Despite- say we rank Tom Lone at the top of Bell of the Batman. No, absolutely <laughs> I like not. His performance. <laughs> absolutely not. He does nothing. Andy, in this where movie do you vote him? To further the plot. I vote him He's number saved- one. With wait, you, hold on. wait, 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 wait. You're all I- fucking nightmares. Nick, Nick, what? you no, literally no, saved Halle like Berry's life. This, this exactly. movie wouldn't exist without him. He's a good dude. Again, and and I say and I and I ask you this question in all seriousness: If he had let that character die at the beginning of this movie, would that not have <laughs> saved us two hours? Would that I, not have saved us? Two is hours? he the true villain? At that Whoa. point, at that point, the no, cat had the already cat's picked the her. true villain. The cat who goes out and almost and risks this woman's life. Do you mean to midnight? Midnight. Yeah, midnight's yeah, midnight's the villain put of this movie. Put some respect on the name. Put some respect on the name. <laughs> Tim, where do you vote Bell of the Batman? Uh, I don't know, Tom man. Alone? Th- this whole list, once again, is so fucked where I put her, him above Vicky Bale. Yeah, there we go. I don't, That's I don't it. Put it we have the votes. We have the votes. No, I, I, I don't. No, no, no. No. no you can't. Because my vote would be underneath Nicole Kidman. All right, let's just settle this to the thing. Think about what the movie you watched. Think about Benjamin Bratt, his award winning smile. 
think oh, I, I, if I have the votes, Nick, I have the votes. You could if you didn't want to sit there. Here's you. You you're sitting there with your little pee pee hat on. It's covered in pee, and you just want to be a ooh, ooh, I'm a lemon cold, party yeah. man. It keeps him cold. It keeps him cool. <laughs> pee pee makes you cold. Yeah. <laughs> you learn to do that as a survivalist, right, Nick? Yeah. If it's hot in the desert, you arc a stream up to your forehead and let it get down. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that urban hiking he does. It's oh true. Lord! You learn shit. You pick shit up when you're going to Andy. <laughs> Hold on one Andy second, Tom. too. I gotta Google lemon party because I said it, and I'm nope. not sure what. Nope. That no, 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 don't Google it. Don't Google it. Yeah. Google it don't on the Google stream. It. What is it? Nope. What is it? Also, is Tom Belong? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? I want to no, see it. Don't, Nick, no, don't. no, 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 don't, yeah. guys. Joke. It is very graphic. <laughs> This is a very old joke, man. Yeah, I thought it had something to do with peeing on yourself. No, it no. does not. It it's no. just several <laughs> older men having a good time. Oh, that's fun. Okay. 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 God damn, now we're standing. We do you think that Benjamin Brad, aka Tom Lone, aka the guy from MCU, aka Tom Long, is he better than Russian Catwoman? Raise your hand. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Raise your hand, I said. Everybody, okay, everybody's hands are. Uh, raise your hand if you think he, she, he's better than Chase Meridian. Who's Chase I'll Meridian? Yes. That's <laughs> Nicole Kidman. I'm going to also say yes. Everyone's Wait, hand yeah, is just but terrible. Okay. Raise your hand if, she, uh, if, if he's so a thirsty. better love interest than Catwoman in Batman Returns. No. No. Yeah, I can't do no. that either. Yeah, you fucking I, psychopath. You were trying. I, have, I was. <laughs> Wait, what, what happened to Chase Meridian? Did they just not explain that at all? What do you need she, to explain? She got so horny, she just exploded. That's what happened. <laughs> right the character is so one-dimensional. Uh, so bad. I am glad that we're getting all of the the smaller uh, podcasts in the podcast out early. Me too. Because like, like at the end of it, I just like I'm done. I'm so fucking like I'm annoyed with the movie usually. <laughs> and but I mean, there's seven things we gotta rank. And it's a nightmare. Oh man. I mean, do you want to keep Greg knocking them out? I'm glad Greg's like, you know, no, 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 no. But I mean, no. we can't saying, like, do a bunch of them. There's the no lead. Alfred, there's no cars, no bats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love it. <laughs> What's up? Welcome to Rock and Robin Part Two, the one where we rank the Rock and Robin outfits for Robin in this one. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of Lois Griffin's hospital smock that she does reference in this as an outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's guys, the bottom. You know what, guys? Don't respond. That's dead last. We're going to put that one dead last. It's less. It's don't, less. Don't give him anything on this. Here's what I'm sorry, Nick, that I'm a man of long order. <laughs> so once we've established that Lois Griffin is, in fact, the sidekick this time around, the rules apply to her. All right? Holy shit. Uh, where was I, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, a budget of a hundred million, a box office of eighty-two oh point one million. Early? Despite the reviews and ratings, Catwoman was the highest-grossing female-led superhero film until the release of Wonder Woman in two thousand seventeen. A uh, runtime of an hour and forty-four minutes, and I already went through the awards. <sighs> I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. I'm it out of breath. Me, it took me like three and a half hours to watch this movie. It was just like. Lots of lots of getting zoned out, lots of rewinding. Now keep sure, in mind, sure. I was all like I had half my brain on the fact that the Braves just like gave up a three one lead to the Dodgers. John Rocker got uh, broken there. Yeah, John Rocker is like being racist out there throwing fastballs. So like it was it was hard. It was a hard watch. I won't act like this was an easy watch. Um, uh, but actually, Andy, not as bad I, as I thought it would be. I didn't have any of that stuff going on, and I missed the last twenty minutes because I fell asleep. And then I woke up this morning at like seven in the morning. And I was like, I guess I'll watch the end of it. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that to myself. Leave it up. Like, to I'm, Kevin, I'm leave better up. than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, to be fair, like, Kevin it can go on forever. Now, to be fair, now it can never end. Kevin texted me last night at 1.25 a.m. Tim, why are you making me watch this movie? And it's like, well, Kevin, I don't know if you falling asleep towards the end is. Tim? Yeah, that doesn't count. Tim, this movie. I yeah. often stay up significantly that's, that's past that fault. time. That has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> I, regardless, if I was watching this movie at nine a.m., I would have given you the text of like, "Why are you making me watch this?" Because it's starting. It started. It started, and it was it, Egyptian hieroglyphs, and I was like, uh, for, "What?" For Forty-five minutes. The for fuck are we minutes, watching? Was, it was key information minutes. to let you know what was happening. Andy, Andy Cortez, kind of funny. funny dot com. Um, I'm hearing I'm hearing Kevin and Tim go back and forth. Nick's popping here every once in a second, uh, and I hear I hear nothing from Greg. And immediately my mind's thinking, like, what song is he prepping right now? <laughs> yeah. I got kind of Andy. paranoid that you were looking up on YouTube. You were ready to do something. Sure. What's up, Greg? 
I was hoping there'd be a song from you. Plot time. Patience Phillips is dead. <laughs> and that's how this movie opens. <laughs> Face down in a pool of water. And she says, nothing really ever. Ex- you probably wondered how I got in this situation. <laughs> you know, and it's that fucking meme. You know the it's fucking meme, Andy? You seen it? Why, why am I here? It's literally something with Kevin, apparently. He echoes now. I, I, um, I will say, it's, I will say it's this. It's literally Steve. Spider-Man. It, the movie starts off like Spider-Man. Right? Doesn't Spider Man start off with voice of who am I? You yeah, know, you're kind of right. Fucking want to know. Yeah, yeah, but that's the yeah, meme, right? But this, this time Spider-Man. she's dead. This you're time ca- she's you're kind of right. I feel like the intro of this, though, the person who was making it do the motion graphics and stuff thought they that like this is going to be the most profound, fucking mind bending, altering experience you've ever had in your life. And, like, because I feel like the intro was kind of like interesting. It's like, oh, wow, they're bringing in all these like. But then they started showing like weird cat faces on women. How like, many did like, they need? It was, it's <laughs> like, so funny because like you don't think you don't think about cats being that historic. So when they show these like drawings of, of people in, in Egypt, and then it just cuts to a tabby house cat. Yeah, no, just but sitting but, next to the, and it's the same fucking cat every time. And then you're like, but, someone clearly clipped that out from like a meow mix ad, right? Not it's, only that, not only that though, but there was just like a legitimate like uh, like the face. I guess like the outline of a cat's head, right? We think the ears, we think the circle head, but then like a human's face was <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just like a lot of really bad photoshopping there. But didn't, Nick, this, this Nick made a joke like, about this like lasting 45 minutes and legitimately it felt like six minutes of just shitty music playing to yeah. set the mood while we're getting the most bizarre pictures shown to us where it's like, I'm with Andy where I'm like, Oh, all right. This is kind of interesting. And Oh, it's still going. Oh, it's getting less interesting. It's getting weird. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is really fucking yeah. weird now. How is this still going? Yeah. And then you get the shittiest Catwoman font I can oh. possibly imagine. This reminds me of like when you make an indie film and you just have to get it to like 81 minutes and you're six minutes short and someone's like, what if? And you just did <laughs> really bad Photoshop for six minutes with bad like chanting underneath it and some cat pictures. Yeah, let's nail that. That's a cool so patience is dead, but then we rewind it, right? How did this happen? How do we find Halle Berry, one of the most beautiful, smart women in the world, dead in a pool of water? Well, we're going to make you wait for it, ladies and gentlemen. Because <laughs> what we find is that Patience Phillips wears formless clothing and leads a boring existence where she has an amazing fucking apartment, a really cool friend named Lois Griffin, and then she just goes to work all the time, but everybody's an asshole there, and she's real quiet and meek. What do you got for me? I was just going to say, she wears that same outfit for, for like, Two Three days, days in a row. Yeah. No, they sure. fucked up. Did you read that that trivia? Mm-mm. No, I didn't. They fucked up, and they. I looked they, in no uh, trivia. I wanted no sure. trivia of this shit because because <laughs> D caught that too. She was like, "Wasn't she wearing that same thing yesterday?" Yeah. The start of the movie apparently was supposed to be the part where she goes out on the ledge and with the cat, but because they reorganized and reshot some stuff, that ended up coming later. So it had the unfortunate outcome of making it feel like every character wore the same outfit for like two and a half days in a row. And there's even a part where. She goes up the stairs and you see a dude, a jacked out dude with a beanie talking. And then when she comes back up those stairs, it's the exact same shot. They had to reuse that shot because they like screwed up and forgot to get, to get it again. It was weird. God, I fuck, Nick, yeah. I, it's terrible. Nick, I love you telling me that they reshot stuff and reordered stuff because like <laughs> how in the world is an editor watching this like. Nah, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then, like, I, you know what? Now, we're now missing this something. Works. We're I, missing I, something. Now this works. Yeah. I legitimately the thought they they were like, oh, it, it, they're just doubling down on the cartoon thing, and everyone just wears the same clothes every day. Oh, <laughs> especially yeah, I the thought... weird thing. Sorry, just one last thing. The weird thing is that first day, the the CEO boss guy made a huge emphasis about how ugly her clothes was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was like, all right, all right, let's see what she wears tomorrow. Oh, she just—it looks oh. like she <laughs> slept in her outfit, woke up, and went straight to work. Okay, I get that. And then she does it again. Well, it hopefully, the this reshoot, then I guess, will hopefully make more sense with the the when we get there. Some of the timeline stuff that's happening in terms of working on a deadline and then waking up and painting <laughs> that has what nothing to do. Yeah, what so is that, going on? That was the whole point, right? Was that she was supposed to be like, oh fuck, like she goes to it was. It's all messed up. It's the whole. Anyways, also, patience love, is dead. She leads a boring existence. Yes, Kevin. I was just gonna say, don't you love when your your, your boss is like, hey, you have till Friday to do this. But Friday at midnight, not end of day Friday. Yeah, yeah no. midnight. 
Because I like, oh, by the way, when you return, when you when you uh, give me the art, I don't want you to come to the, the headquarters. I want you to go to the fucking chemical factory down the yeah. road. Yeah. And that's where I'll be. I'll be in the chemical yeah. factory. Yeah. <laughs> Not our amazing headquarters where my fucking baller ass villain office is. It was a weird. He wasn't even a villain. The whole no, plot yeah. of this movie, by the way, I just want to take an a step asshole. back, is that they have a face cream that gives people headaches. But if you push through the headache, it makes your face impenetrable to any sort of harm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And But if you keep doing it, it'll make you sick. And then, so I wonder, what is the... If you stop using it. If you stop using it, I guess it makes you sick. Sure. Yeah. So at a certain point, they're like, we have to... We This is a secret so important that we keep secret that we were willing to kill for it. And then I'm like, well, wouldn't people figure that out eventually if this thing got released into the masses and millions of women started using this face product and then started getting sick and like feeling bad about it? Wouldn't at some point. Well, no, because Lois was getting yeah, headaches Alex even though she was well, using I, it. But I think she, and they put she her must have run out, right? She must have run out. They never really established that. Because she got she got a sample early. No, she didn't run out because she had remember um she was like, oh, I gotta use she was in the hospital, but she's like, I gotta use my face cream. She's like, you gotta throw this away. You gotta way too movie. much of this face cream. No, it's oh, the wait, whole no, point yeah, of this Halle movie Berry is, tell remember calls her and she's like, Hey, promise to stop using that. And she's like, okay. No, and then she, no, she doesn't call her, right? She throws it away, doesn't she? No, because Kevin, she remember. Yeah, Kevin was literally in a fever like this. the whole time. The very first time we see Alex Borstein, she goes, hey, here's the cream that's going to be the MacGuffin of this movie. Takes it off, rubs it on her temples, and then immediately goes, oh, I got a headache. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what a when she faints, man. Holy shit. <laughs> what a fucking. And then, and then Sharon Stone's like, if this makes my face impenetrable. Maybe it'll make my whole body impenetrable and just starts lathering it onto her neck. And then her poor housekeeper walks in and goes, oh, oh, no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's happening here. You've got way too much on just your neck. You spread it out. Spread it out. So anyways, uh, her job sucks. She's got cool coworkers, though. Uh, then, yeah, we get to look get a look in here at uh, Sharon Stone and her husband. Uh, who's the guy? Uh, hey, hey there, the, guy from, the guy from uh, Matrix 2. No, 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 I don't care who he actually is. I'm talking about in the movie universe. We got Laurel Dare, and George yeah. here. Laurel and George. Like, jo- like George. That's the last time. Foreman. Laurel. I knew you were going Hardy. There. Of course I was. The Foreman girl. Um, it, it turns out that Sharon Stone's gotten old. So they're replacing her with a new face of the company. Uh, she interrupts her husband's big speech about it, and then she starts fucking screaming at him, and they start yelling at each other because they have a loveless marriage, but they're you know locked into this whole beauty uh, cream uh, scheme or whatever. They can't get away from that. Um, uh, yeah, then this is the whole thing that Patience is on this deadline like we're talking about. Uh, she comes into the room to show the stuff to him, and this is right, and they, he, they're all arguing. And so she shows it, and he's like, this is terrible. It's not red enough. And she's like, I'm sorry. And he's like, you know, you're a fucking incompetent asshole. Get out of here. And you, <laughs> your clothes suck. Your clothes are fucking terrible or whatever. And she's like, oh, now, I'm sorry. Now, to be uh, fair, they yeah, did t- suck. Yeah, yeah, that was like oh, some yeah, of, yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah, some yeah. of like, maybe the worst outfit I've ever seen on a character in a movie and it's ever. Competent and, asshole. And Kevin <laughs> And Kevin, it's one of those things where like you're a monster. You guy. can only try to make Halle Berry not look hot as much as possible, Wait, right? Yeah. She's very but beautiful. Also, but also her acting like like Halle Berry isn't good enough to play like the oh gee whiz, I guess No, I but she is. Weird, Remember like, she, this is an Oscar winning actor. Like I don't know, she didn't show it. She, but yeah. <laughs> again, I think that that has more to like do with the direction that she was given well, and what she got. Him, what she had. Him, I'm gonna I'm gonna direct you just like Pilaf directed mm-hmm. her. You're a cat. You're a okay. cat. Be mm-hmm. a cat right now, Tim. Be At all cat. times, just be Pick a cat. I get it. Hey, because I want to give a shout out to the director for the scene here uh, when the the boss is like yelling at at Halle Berry, and then his wife is just looking out the window. <laughs> Obviously, the over. bad guy. Yeah. It's like just so <laughs> weird. Where it's like the foreshadowing of this movie is just so thick that it's like, why the fuck would we even have this scene, and why is she there? It's just so good because it's episode. setting it up god you're just not a screenwriter you know you're right I mean? yeah. you're right you know what Neither I mean? were they, look at right. me. you I'm need just it cat. there because they because what what do you think's gonna happen with catwoman <laughs> right you're gonna get female empowerment right and you do but sharon stone is there giving you the red herrings making it seem like she's your friend making it seem like 
girl power when in fact it's bad guy power and that's what the whole thing is about right there that's bad what it is power. we're setting up the fact that the mm-hmm. bad guy is the dude from the matrix and that sharon stone is like all jimmy jillikers too like i'm in on, i'm in it with you right Jimmy Jillikers. anyways too. though th- she does the thing where he's like yeah you are an incompetent jerk and i don't like your work and your clothes suck too and sharon stone's like come on you know she's brilliant she's like steve jobs that's why she wears these weird clothes give her give her let her do it let her make the red redder you know what i mean make the and also by the way it turns out that this guy's just a lying little bitch because he in fact wanted this red this color Halle berry's like no you wanted this and he's like i know what i said you know what i mean that's just that i hate that part so much greg is is sharon stone being like look she's good at her job that's why you hired her it's like you don't know who she is sharon stone (laughs) come on she's why is there a good She's a uh, fucking junior designer who like has is no, at the no, lowest no. tier. Like she was running the the whole line. She was like in charge of putting that all together. Was she right? the art director? Because yeah. for me, I was there I'm was, with Andy. Was I the, just thought this was like a this is a random no, person that's like there's a moment good where at art. her and Alex are walking like she's walking up to the room and she's like, "This is the first time I'm leading a project." So I have to oh, try my best. Got it because yeah. because I guess with the intro that Halle Berry sort of led on was that like. I'm stuck in this terrible position that I hate. I would rather have this other position that I, you know, studied for or whatever. Anyway. Yeah, she's, you know, uh, looking a gift horse in the mouth. You know what right, I mean? No, no, in I the workaday know. world of the city they exist in that's never named. Let me tell you, <laughs> having a job. Is it not Gotham? It. No. no. It's never, never named. named. Even at the end, I paused it when Al, uh, uh, when Lois Griffin's reading the newspaper, just the standard city edition. Like, what city are you in? <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Susan, uh, no, I'm sorry, not Susan Sarandon, Sharon Stone uh, stands up uh, and like, give her some more time. He's like, all right, yeah, you have until tomorrow at midnight, which again, yes, is an incredibly weird deadline. And you'd think she would get right to work on it. But no, instead she goes home and she goes to bed. But there's a party across the street with this, these bikers. And so she opens her window. She's like, wait, please, please, wait, please. please. Also, so just... <laughs> We're bikers! No, man! Party forever! <laughs> wait, Greg, thing, I, I, I actually... I haven't thought about this before. Tomorrow at midnight, wouldn't that be like the midnight the that's coming day. up? No. Like tomorrow at midnight is well, midnight. Tonight at midnight. What? You have till midnight tonight if I was doing it today. But tomorrow. If but I isn't, you have isn't midnight, midnight tomorrow? tomorrow? Midnight's not tomorrow? No. Midnight's definitely no. tomorrow. Well, I think, I think the inference is you have a day and a half, basically. It's 5 o'clock today. You got all tonight this is, and all day tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry, Nick. The implication... Sorry, I feel I you, Kevin. I feel you it's on this. Right. I feel you on this. Midnight in general is a confusing thing. That's why embargoes are always set for 12.01 a.m. So you don't fuck mm. it up. Because what day does midnight mm. technically fall on? It's in the again, middle there, right? Midnight, Mid- once again, the villain of this movie. Wait, it's what I always wow. want to point out to you about Gremlins. If we can do Gremlins. There's layers, in pit tongs, man. That, actually, that is a good call, Tim. Good job, yeah. Fuck. But, you know, Gremlins don't feed them after midnight. It's like, well, isn't it always after midnight technically? How do no. you do that? You know what I mean? No, no, no. It's always Eventually, your belated birthday. Noon, it's always your belated birthday. It's rid of midnight, you know what I mean? Is that how it works? I don't know. So, so they can only things be have to fast for 12 midnight. hours. No, 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 we have to no, call no, Warner Brothers again? It's, it's between midnight and whenever the sun goes up. Because once the sun goes up, you can feed them because it's no longer nighttime. You know what I mean? You remember so, that country song, Ain't Going Down Till the Sun Comes Up? Uh, so patience can't no. get the party to wow. shut up, so she goes to bed. And so what does she do then in the morning? She wakes up on this incredibly tight deadline to redo everything that needs to be a different color of red, and she wakes up and paints. And you're like, oh, she's painting uh, the ad campaign. No, she's just painting to paint. It's like, all right, that's whatever. And this is when midnight shows up and it is all like, meow, meow, meow. And like Catwoman's wow, looking at him like, I'm not just Catwoman like yet. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so it's out on the fucking ledge. She goes out to look for him. He's not there. Then she looks over and he's up on the fucking thing above an air conditioning unit. Meow, At which point meow, you go, meow. you got up there. You can get down. Like you don't need yeah. me. Like clearly you're that's a fucking not, cat. That's not true. That's not how cats work. Just so you know. Like they, that's why they get stuck in trees. Because yeah, they get, they get up, they get up trees. But they don't understand how to get down, because claws down. they hook, you know. But they don't yeah, hook I do. downwards. I, I think you know, I think we're focusing on the tree, just leave it; it'll figure itself out. That's I think not we're true. focusing they, they on die the wrong. Trees. It's a nine lives. We're focusing, on, we're focusing on the wrong thing here, everybody. Is that this Egyptian cat, <laughs> uh, ancient Egyptian cat, has powers unbeknownst to humans anywhere except for the old lady. She's the only one who knows. Chose Halle Berry. To give her powers because bikers were playing music loud. Yeah. Like, there's got to be other people in the world that like <laughs> are more deserving of this. No, power. like he this saw power in this curse, including saw, the Catwoman. 
the woman that has a lot of cats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, her life sucks. Her life's not great. What do you is she like, had a dope probably... house in the middle of downtown? Like that in is the downtown. middle of downtown. Downtown, downtown like, some city. Did anyone else feel like there was another story happening where there was a land developer trying to get her to sell that house so yeah. that they it was could definitely, put up a condo high rise? It was a uh, batteries not included kind of situation, you know? It definitely was yeah. batteries not but included. But like midnight 100%. had already saved the day there. Like that was his job with her, you know? Anyway, when we get to the part where the old lady tells Halle Berry, hey, she chose you, I I think back and wonder why. Oh, because she was. Midnight knew it. And remember, Midnight was out on the bike. And Midnight knew that Halle Berry was going to die. And so it was looking for a new spirit to inha- or a new body to inhabit with the spirit. Uh, I think. And that- so they needed to test her to see, like, are you a pure of heart? And the fact that, as we were getting to, she comes out on the ledge to get the cat and, like, risks her own life to save this stupid fucking cat. That's when Midnight was like, you know what? You are a chill chick. I'll give you, you the Catwoman powers. You and cool. this starts, this is where we get the spin off <laughs> the cat and the brat. Benjamin Bratt. Oh my God. Can you car, imagine yeah. a buddy cop flip? <laughs> flip <between Yeah. laughs> Benjamin Bratt and Midnight on a quest to find <laughs> Catwoman? I'd be down for that one. I, so, I, yeah, I yeah, want to shout out to now. Benjamin Bratt. Like, just Thank you, but- being the nicest guy. You know what I mean? Like, be, like yeah. Uh, yeah, of course I see the cat. It's a beautiful cat. There's no cat. You know what I mean? It was yeah. in her head. In his head. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what happens, right? Uh, she gets out there, and then she gets stranded on top of the air conditioner unit that's going to give out. Benjamin Bratt's driving by, pulls over, like, don't jump. And then, yeah. Don't jump. Thing. He sees the cat. Sees the cat. That isn't the cat. Don't jump. Don't jump. You got so much to live for. Now, here's where, like, I, 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 not to get too finicky with it. Later, you know, she goes, like, what, what, what apartment are you? And she goes, 23. And he runs up there and he kicks in the door. Later, she'll get into her apartment from the back of the building and she's on the second floor. Like, I think she could have survived this jump, no problem, but I digress. But it seemed like, and I get what you're saying, but it seemed like she was at least at the, on the third story. So, right. you know what I mean? From the back, from the front, it seemed that way. From the back, it definitely seemed like it was just, the second yeah. story, and, and and during that sequence, Greg, I'm like, is this somebody else's apartment? At that, like the <laughs> sequence you're talking about, where I, same, she breaks through the glass yeah. for no real reason, yeah, 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 yeah. and then she wakes up looking just clean and super made up as all hell, even was, though she had, like, she was washed up ashore and she had all this yeah, shit all she, over her body. Yeah, she took <laughs> off her clothes and took a shower. I mean, that was implied. Like, yeah. Yeah. She probably, yeah, she probably licked herself aggressively. Got it. Okay. Uh, so he breaks into her apartment. He gets her out and at the last second, like saves her by grabbing her. Very similar to the Conjuring, uh, Conjuring Two we watched the other day. Uh, yeah. He gets her back in there, and she's like, "Oh my god, thanks for saving me." He's like, "No problem." And then the cat's there, and he's like, "Holy shit, you really were looking for a cat. You're not. You're not just. You weren't suicidal." And she's like, "I told you, haha." And he's like, oh. "Cool." And then she's like, "Wait, there's a big deadline at work." She actually says, "I got to get to work today," which makes sense with these reshoots Nick's been talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to get to work. So she runs out of the building, sh- shuts her door, gets him out, shuts the door. Uh, it's fucking got kicked in, so it's garbage door anyway. But she just leaves it. The city of whatever city they are in is very safe. <laughs> she runs. She drops her wallet. Benjamin Bratt walks over, picks up the wallet, doesn't yell for her because she's already gone. She's fucking hustling. And he's like, huh. <laughs> and he opens up and pulls out a business card. Then we go back to her office where she's there. And she's yeah, talking about her crazy day with Lois and the guy next to her. And this is where I think we introduced Lois and the cream. Uh, but maybe we've seen it in the other one. And they're just having a, a time there. They're just having fun weird, talking. And guess what happens? Weird sideburns on this guy. I don't style. trust this guy in general. He's, he's, got, the, he's got the sideburns like... It's, he doesn't have a beard. He has sideburns that connect to the mustache in a very or like connect to the goatee. Did you all not notice this? I noticed it, and it's stuff that needs to be fixed. And you can fix your facial hair oh, problems, ladies and gentlemen, God. with Manscaped. Uh, 2020 is nuts, but that doesn't mean you should disregard your beautiful nuts. Manscaped is on a mission to take care of your twins with their be- below the waist grooming and hygiene products. And they just released their products in the UK, Canada, and Australia. So get hyped, everybody. Now, everyone else around the world can enjoy the, the beauties of Manscaped. Uh, they just released their Crop Care Kit, which is a formulation bundle to give you A-plus balls and is the ultimate male hygiene pack. Uh, they got the Crop Reviver, which is a ball toner. It's a spray-on toner that will give your balls a little slice of heaven with their aloe vera and hazel extracts. Tell me that doesn't sound like just a joy. Uh, there's also the Foot Duster. It's a foot deodorant designed to keep the stankiest feet smelling fresh. Uh, the waterproof technology allows you to groom in the shower for up to 90 minutes. 
It's a long time. Uh, Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer offers a replaceable ceramic blade with advanced skin safe technology. You're not going to nick your nuts anymore. That's fantastic. These formulations are all vegan, cruelty free, dye free, sulfate free, and paraben free. I don't even know what a paraben is, but it sounds like a bad thing. Uh, so you know your manhood is in good hands. Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code MORNING. Again, manscaped.com, code MORNING to get 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com, code MORNING. Now, some places you want to keep your hair, and that's where Keeps comes into play. Uh, as guys, much of our identity is wrapped up in our hair, from how it feels after getting a fresh cut to the way it's perfectly styled before going out. That's why when we get into our 20s and 30s and start noticing the first size of hair loss, it definitely feels like panic time. Because let's face it, no guy is ever ready to go bald. Thankfully, now there's Keeps, the simple and easy way to keep your hair. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of pat male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair because uh, it's a lot easier to keep it prevention is key keeps treatments typically take between four to six months to see results so it's important to act fast uh find out why keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and more than a hundred thousand men trust keeps for the hair loss prevention medication keeps treatments start at just ten dollars a month plus for a limited time you can get your first month free uh check that out at keeps.com slash morning to receive your first month of tre treatment for free Again, that's K E E P S dot com slash morning. Keeps dot com slash morning to receive your first month of treatment for free. Uh, let's go to our final sponsor this episode, which is Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post has a brand new seasonal box of awesome collection for you guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. Whether it's gear to upgrade your autumn craft beers or cozy threads for when the temperature dips, Bespoke Post only sends you the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered from style and grooming needs, like Blessing just got some dope shoes, to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, and some dope hue lights that uh, the Kevin and Joey have both been using. From style and grooming gear, goods, to barware, cooking tools, all that stuff, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, you take a quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box only costs $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. You can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code MORNING at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Code MORNING for 20% off your first box. Back to the plot. I know there's been a lot of arguments lately in the kind of funny community on the internet about the who who the true king of Halloween is. Mm -hmm. I just want you all to know I just got a care package from Brock's. <laughs> That's a Ghostbusters candy catcher. Get it's a box you can, you can construct to make a proton pack that holds all your candy. There's also a ton of candy, and I'm very excited. Back to the plot. I don't know where were we in this Garbo movie, <laughs> right? So uh, uh, she's she's there. Uh, she's, she's not even uh, Catwoman yet. Benjamin Bratt shows. I can I can move though if you want. Benjamin Bratt shows up and he's like, "Hey, uh, I found your wallet and you ran out real quick, but we should get coffee sometime. I'd love to do that." And she's like, "Oh, I can't today because I'm on a deadline that uh, we haven't really driven home. is very important. But I uh, tomorrow at one o'clock." And he's like, "That's perfect. I'll see you there at this place. That's an Italian coffee place." And she's like, "Great. It's like Gregorio, but it's not Gregorio. But we're gonna call it Gregorio from here on out." And she's like, "That's great. This is cool." And then though, it's like, "Oh right, the deadline." So they do this whole time lapse thing of her working throughout the day and never leaving your desk all night and finishing the fucking uh, red thing he, he he the guy needs. And then she's like, cool. She calls up a message messenger and she's like, I need you to take this tube full of shit over there. And they're like, it's fucking 930 at night. We're not doing that. And she's like, oh, no. All right, fine. I'll take it myself. It was 1145. So, yeah, now it's 1145 at night. I'll take it myself. And so she That's goes cool. over to the plant that they're at there over there where they're doing it. And it turns out in there, there's a briefing happening. Now, this is what I one of the things I didn't understand. And I granted, I know they give her the memory loss thing, but they also try to make it out to us like we don't know Sharon Stone's the bad guy. Susan yeah. Randon, Sharon yeah. Stone's the bad they guy. They try to do that, and it's, and it's not it's like, very I hear clear. Her voice. Right there. I hear her voice incredibly clearly here saying, oh, no, I don't care about your thing. Because the doctor's like, oh, man, this fucking, it, look at the, it deforms your face. It'll kill you. It gives you. I can live with the headaches, but the oh, lasting things of it ruining your face forever, I can't. And, she, and she's like, listen, doesn't matter. It's all about, like, keeping them hooked, and it'll keep them hooked, and I'm all about that life. And he's like, ah, no, but I'm not. And then Halle Berry, of course, like, sneaks in because she like she's trying to get into this place to deliver the fucking file. Yeah, Nick? Again, sorry, to back up, was there ever a moment where they said we need it delivered midnight to the other building? Or was, like, why did she think to walk into it this must have, particular It must have been a scene that was cut out. 
or but you I never scare someone and you say when you and when you say somebody and you say hey this needs to be done at midnight you're gonna find that person wherever they are but he wasn't there yeah he I, did but that's no, where they thought he'd be i will be at the toxic waste plant <laughs> at midnight so you need to do it. like greg last time you asked me to drop something by your house you didn't ask me to meet you down in the fucking basement where your recycling bins are sure. you were like meet me out front where you normally what a normal person would meet me last but you weren't you like went... scared for your job but last time but also you went, like i think last time you went to his house you went and filmed stuff in the in the garage that was that was purposeful and we don't talk about what we were wearing or lack of clothing that we were wearing uh andy uh let me ask you a question as a it's professional a photoshop outfit. user we just said we don't talk about it kevin okay. yep misunderstood yeah. Andy, Nick Scarpino from kind of funny um d- in 2004 did photoshop exist you're muted. You're muted, Andy. You. You're muted. Oh, I would say like in 99 or 98 it, or maybe 80, 88. I don't know. It, it's existed for a while. Yeah. Follow up question. Go ahead, Nick. Nick Scarpino for kind of funny. How long does it take to switch a color of a background in Photoshop? Is that something that takes <laughs> two days to do? Because <laughs> no, he was like, I don't like that color red. I'd have been like this. Hold on a second. Click, click, yeah, click, click. Yeah, let me just Is control that you. Huge color shit. red? Yeah. 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 That technology didn't exist in this universe. Remember, you're dealing with the multiverse here. It's madness. Yeah. Um, so she gets <laughs> in there. She clings into a bunch of stuff. And they're like, oh, there's somebody here. And she's like, I got to go. Whoop, 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 whoop. And she runs Whoa. away. And there's like a dust cloud of her. And so she's running through the thing. There's these two guards that are like the right-hand man of uh, Sharon Stone. And they're out there. And they're like, shoot. one of them shoots. And the other gets all mad. And then they don't ever touch me. And they're doing their thing. And she, Halle Berry's me. running. Don't ever touch me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> told you to stop that touching is, me. That is, such, that is such a perfect example of Greg Miller doing a plot. I'm just like, don't yeah, there's these two guys. And they're doing some stuff. And don't ever touch me. And <laughs> <laughs> Which, by really, the way, it works. <laughs> like, what an awkward, like, <laughs> don't ever touch my gun. And it's like, all right. But, don't like, don't do that shoot, again like don't shoot in the middle also, of this lab how well trained are these guys that they know how the garbage disposal unit in this lab works where the guy's like flush the system okay and walks Got immediately it. over to the panel Just that flushes the, thing, the system he, and flips it hits the button i'm like wow you really know your job well Nick, like, he, he doesn't know the even inside and outside of this building doesn't have to walk anywhere, bro. He's yeah, just he's standing right there. next to you. He just fucking boom, chikoom. And I was like, oh, shit. They flushed a lot of toxic bro. waste before, all right? Yeah. Uh, yes, so that's uh, what happens. Uh, Halle Berry's in the pipes. They flush the thing. She hears it coming. She's like, oh, no. And she gets oh, hit with all the toxic no. waste stuff. And she, boiling acid. She gets knocked out into Wait, the water. Wait, did she act like, is it actually toxic waste? Like, do they make a point of that? Because you guys keep it's saying waste, that. It's waste it's water. It's waste water. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, she died from, like, Drowning, right? Falling over and drowning. I mean, she got I a lot of crud on her face. The I think it was the sheer I don't pressure, know. like the what? force of the water hitting her. Because here's the thing: these and people, her out they clearly out. watched Batman yeah, in, Returns. In the they clearly at least yep. watched a five minute clip of Batman Returns, and yep. they're like, mm-hmm. "Fuck, we need to do that." This is a Catwoman movie. What's the thing people remember about Catwoman? Leather, and she Falling. got brought back. To, she fell. Cats brought her back to life. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's all we got to do. But we need to take it up to the early 2000s level of extreme. Cool. What's going to happen? From way, way high up, she's going to get knocked out full force by a lot of water yeah. into this into the ocean. It is going to be extremely violent. It's going to be real bad for her. Then she's somehow going to get swept up onto this random little island somewhere by herself. And then hella it, cats are going to be there. Do you, <laughs> do you think that? Well, the cats came because they knew what was going down. The cats yeah. knew the future, remember? It, do you think at some Midnight point knew. there were Midnight hella knew. cats swimming? That's what I'm saying. So Midnight put out the cat call, the cat sure, signal, sure. which I can't believe they didn't somehow double down on. Yeah. And then these fucking cats just show up on the island. Last I heard, cats don't like water. No. I don't know how they got there. This it's movie falls movie. apart right there. Well, again, they have powers. Midnight has powers, don't forget. Do all the other what cats are, have powers? Please, ex- Greg Miller, please explain to me a list of Midnight's powers. <laughs> and yep. what's in your mouth? <laughs> what's in the mouth? What's in the I mouth? I got trolley sour bites in there, right? That's what I got in there right now. Great. Okay. That, that looks lunch really time? good. Is it I didn't expect it to be this chewy. I thought I could eat them faster while you guys were making a point. <laughs> just, just swallow it, Greg. Wait. I feel like it's a choking hazard. No, you'll be fine. The cats will save you. Cats, also, yeah. I'm not getting all the true trolley flavor. <laughs> Fun fact, the other day I Cecil you, started Greg. choking, gave him the Heimlich. It works on dogs. You're so weird, Jesus. What, what is this the hellscape what, you should, live in where this things can, these things could happen? What do you mean? He was eating too <laughs> much food and he started choking. 
on his food. From the top, midnight powers. <laughs> midnight <laughs> powers. <laughs> they, people choke all the yes. time on what they're eating. Number one, immortality. Mm-hmm. This is not a different cat you're seeing in all the photos from the very beginning that we will see later on in the film. This is the same Midnight. Mm-hmm. Midnight doesn't age. Midnight is some kind of Egyptian god. I, I, what, uh, they keep talking about somebody. Ba- Basque? Bath? 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 Sheba? No, that's, that's Conjure. Valak. The cuckoo in review. Don't forget everybody. Valak. Anyways, um, so number one, immortality. Number two, teleportation. Mm-hmm. Midnight pops in and out where he wants, right? He's right above Halle Berry's head, That's gone, then he's clear. inside it's the place. Very clear. Uh, so again, Midnight point... didn't swim to the thing. Midnight teleported over there. Cool. Wait, Next but... Midnight power, the ability to imbibe one Catwoman per living person. Mm-hmm. So like, if they're, for one Catwoman to rise, one must die. So he can only give one Catwoman of any age, any time period, the power, which the is why we don't see a lot of duplicates. What would you say, Tim? The rule of two. The mm-hmm. rule of two. Was that right? I don't Not know. a rule, no. Jedi Sith rule of third, it's but a that's okay. Sith, Sith rule. Sith oh, thing, yeah. I apologize. My apologies. There's always two. Yeah. yeah. And so the those are the, those are the top level powers. Remember, it, similar to what your very smart and exactly. eagle-eyed fiance, Gia Tap Harris, was able to see midnight can get big, midnight can get small. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's the biggest crazy power. The real superhero <laughs> and villain in this movie is midnight. <laughs> <laughs> when when Halle Berry is laying there on the ground again, mi- uh, as Midnight is walking on her again in a very big form, I thought the same thing as B. I thought Midnight looks gigantic. She looks like a panther crawling on panther. Uh, on Halle Berry's it. body. I didn't see um, that. But then I was just waiting in anticipation for like, what is going to happen here? <laughs> like, I don't. Again, I don't know what the transfer of power is going to look like. Yeah, I don't know. What the hair 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 hair. Hair. Yeah. Were you surprised? <laughs> I, I like when I, I audibly laughed, like there was several moments where I just went, Oh man, come on. It, and it's just like, it's this green kind of breath. Uh, it's just so bizarre. It's, it's fucked so up. Weird. Cause like I, we've been watching some of the conjuring movies and the way that the, the, the demons possess you is they vomit black goo in your mouth. <laughs> Very similar to like, this, this mist stuff. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't like terrible, it. Terrible. Terrible. <sighs> <sighs> um, so yeah, uh, all that happens. Uh, Midnight's on her chest. The other cats are there to observe. And again, this is back to somebody who watched Batman Returns. And they were like, this will be a cool thing if we continue this part of the Michelle Pfeiffer transition into this thing. And it wasn't. Uh, however, Halle Berry, her eyes go kind of cat-like. She wakes up. And then guess what? She's got cat vision which means she can focus in on things like birds are flying and she thinks they're about to hit her, but they're way far away. There's a little crab or whatever on the ground. It, she sees that. She starts trying to play with it. It's funny because like we get a little bit of like them trying to explain why cats act the way they do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They know that, exactly. They've never studied cats. No, I know. That's, it, it's they true. can't be studied. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> um, so she goes home. Uh, yeah, yeah. Catwoman goes home and, uh, she gets there and, uh, she's like, eh. she goes to bed. She breaks. Is this where she breaks in? No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This is where she breaks in. She breaks in and goes to bed and then she wakes up and she's all clean, but she overslept. She does she a big up. jump first. She does like the big, like, yeah, from outside. Out the the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Into the balcony. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Showing she has the cat, the cat agility, cat jumps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cat jumps. Um, she goes in there. Uh, she oversleeps. Uh, she wakes up though, and she sees Midnight's there, right? And Midnight's got the address on it, uh, she, Midnight's collar. Yeah, she's up in the cupboard too. I feel like we should note that because that right, right. That looks cats very like to sleep in high places. I mean, who doesn't? Sure, you know. Uh, and so she gets out of the high place, and she goes, uh, finds Midnight, and she's like, "All right," goes to the cat lady's house. The cat lady there is the woman from Six Feet Under, and she's like, this is your cat. She's like, oh, Midnight never brings some strangers, and she's super weird. And Halle Berry's like, I don't know about this shit. And she's like, no, but there's other things going on. Like, Don't you you uh, want some cat stuff? uh, The the little scroll that popped out of her collar, uh, uh, Midnight's collar, was really cool. Like, it seems like a terrible way to put that information there. And, like, did Halle Berry put it back after she she pulled it out? You think so? But, like, Really cool. I like that a lot. Great. Um, then uh, she's like, you're a fucking weird lady. I'm going to get out of here. She's like, before you go, have this. And she tosses like a ball at her. She's like, well, and she starts rubbing all over her face. And she pulls away. She's like, catnip. And Halle Berry's like, fucking geez, I got to go. All right. There was a deadline last night. And I forget if I made it or didn't make it or whatever. Nick, 
Now, I don't know if this is a piece of trivia or not, but I'm pretty sure they shot this scene dead last. Because if they didn't, and Halle Berry shot this scene first, and then was like, I'm going to continue to shoot the rest of this movie, then she deserves everything she got. Gotcha. (laughs) Gotcha. Fair. This was fucking terrible. So she goes to work and she gets there and uh, she like sleeps at her desk. And then like the, the boss comes in and he's all like reaming her, just giving her a new one. Yeah. And he's like, she turns around. She's like, what? And so she wasn't even fucking listening. And he's like, I've never been so disrespected. I'm very angry and a businessman who likes a very specific red. And so he gives her some more of it. And then she starts doing this like dual personality thing where she's meek for a second, but then she's all oh, fucking cat. Why don't you meek? She's all cat. And finally yeah, she's like, not. you can take this job and fucking shove it, bruh. And he's like, Get the fuck out of here! And then she's what about, like, "What was oh, she I was drawing?" Joking. Well, she was drawing Get him. It was him with like horns and shit. Yeah, it's a demon, yeah. right? Yeah. I know this is a weird thing for me to say, but I genuinely mean this. This was the moment that this movie falls apart. <laughs> there was some <laughs> weird shit that made it a bad movie before this, okay. but this is the moment that I'm like, all logic is out the window. It before it's like, oh yeah, I guess she's gonna kind of act like a cat. That's where we're gonna go down this sure. this, this this cat hole, right? No, 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 no. Like, Don't say it. Let's not say that. She's, she's just going to just be this weird, two-sided, one moment I'm this, one moment I'm that, neither moment cat-like. It's just fucking all of a sudden she's insane. Yeah. She's None an of this insane adds up. This. Like, it, it's not like, oh, man, she's being a cat. It's like, nah, you're just being fucking weird, yeah. drawing a weird picture, acting out, and then immediately taking it back. Both of those weird things to do. Tim. Yeah, Tim. At the end of the day, they they keep talking about that there's like these two split personalities. Really, there's three. There is cocky, there is meek, and there is I'm gonna eat a bunch of tuna on my bed. Yes, <laughs> like, you guys. The, the, <laughs> what, what you guys are ignoring is like the metamorphosis part takes time. You know what I mean? When a caterpillar decides to become a butterfly. He acts weird for a couple days. You know, eventually he vomits a bunch of like string around himself. <laughs> And uh, then yeah. goes butterfly mode, but like science, you know. science, science with Kev. Butterfly mode. <laughs> there you go. I'll say this: like this, 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 it freaks this you is out. a huge, this is a huge problem with this movie. Is they were like, you have to have some level of like confusion and internal struggle in this, but they just push it way too far into into the into the cat realm. Her having like. There needed to be subtlety with this, where we got like subtle moments of her having abilities that. Or, or like these these kind of, um, I don't know, quirks that a cat would have. But it's so fucking on the nose when she's talking and she's just walking on the top of her couch. And yeah, then someone's like, you might be a stuff. cat. And she's like, oh, no, I'm a cat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the hissing at people. The hissing at people the, 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 there's a moment, by the way, later when she jumps onto the stage and you get a sense. You're like, oh, my God. They designed this fucking stupid stage play to look like cat toys and she literally swats at a couple of them as she runs backstage that's where i as a warner brother executive would just bring out the uzi and spray everyone down <laughs> jesus <laughs> that's too far Nick. i can't, can't let this yeah. happen anymore you can't say things like that you know yeah but Anyway, coming back to this God. scene, like the the idea that everybody claps when she tells off yeah. the boss makes no sense. Like I don't understand what the like what they were going for there. They're all happy that she finally spoke out, but it's like but like so she got he, fired. He, it's not he yeah, didn't. She super got fired. He didn't fucking like leave for like he's he. Could but somebody finally told her off. Yeah, that, as soon as that happened, Jen turned to me. She's like, these people need to quit their jobs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. if you hate your boss this much, you gotta yeah get out of there, right? Uh, yeah. But they don't. Instead, Lois helps her clean out her desk and take all her shit home. And they're walking there, and uh, Halle Berry gets distracted by some shiny diamonds. But at the same time, Lois collapses right. right in the street, right there, right. Bam, down. Peter scared. What a uh, pivotal plot moment. I mean, it is. All a big of deal. us are like scared. What's gonna yeah. happen to our Robin? Oh, by the way, we'll get to this in a second. Sorry. Uh, one of the, the thing that woke her up when she overslept was the call from Benjamin Bratt, who was at the coffee shop. Oh, right. And she that was through. actually she very sad. He's a, he, that's why he's a great bell of the Batman, but I yeah. digress. Um, <laughs> so Lois real. collapses. Uh, they take Lois to the hospital. Uh, she's okay, but they're still going to keep her for 19 months, and they're just going to watch her very closely because <laughs> they don't know what's wrong with her, but they're, they also don't want to just let her out on the street again to collapse again. So she will have a $13 billion bill as she gets taken care of forever. Uh, Manky um, Sausage in the chat asks, why do the cat powers make her want to steal diamonds? It's because they're shiny, right? Yeah, exactly. Cats yeah. love lasers. Yeah. Um, and lasers can't happen without what, Andy? 
Science. Diamonds. Diamonds. Uh, and so, yeah, that's fine. She then decides, okay, you know, at, you know, whatever. Uh, Lois is fine enough. Uh, we are now going to apologize to Benjamin Bratt. So we call the police station off camera and then Benjamin Bratz teaching a bunch of kids how to play basketball or just talking to them about being a good person. But then he's going to play basketball. Then she shows up with a coffee. It says, sorry, the kids go and play b-ball because that's what they want to do. And then she walks outside with him. And then the kid's like, why don't you guys play one on one? And they're like me. Yeah. All right. And then they go and it's just the fucking basketball scene. I don't know who wants to take this one. She, she does I want to start it. I want to start it off because I've heard a lot about this scene from Andy and like apparently it's a big meme on the Internet. I somehow have missed this. I've never heard about it i've never seen clips of it this was the first time i've got to take in whatever it was i think the most bizarre thing of the entire bit was the fact that these kids their desire is to watch adults play one-on-one basketball are you fucking kidding me they want that ball they want to play they don't even know who she is though (laughs) like like that's the thing. It's like they'd want to play with her. Maybe I understand. It, it would under. I, it would make sense to him if maybe she was the the guidance counselor of this school and he was the teacher always there. They're like, oh, let's watch uh, these people. But like, yeah. we don't know who these people are. Here, like, let's take our fun and give it to these fucking adults we don't know, so that yeah. we can watch them. And all the kids are like enthralled by this. Yeah, and it's they're like stoked. they're like one on one. I'm like, no, this is not yeah. how kids work, man. But it's also not how basketball works. Andy, I'll let you take it here as our number one <laughs> sports well, enthusiast. Well, I mean, just first off, I love the way this scene starts off with her just doing like this, like throwing the ball back and like forth. Andy, like that. Like, you know how bad I am at basketball? I could yeah. do that. I could just yeah. throw the ball back. They were like, Hallie, what do you know how to do? She's like, This. They're like, Oh, go, 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 good. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, film. but then, roll, but then roll, they do roll, the roll. really, really quick shots to like cover up her face and they do like the, where it spins around her arms or whatever. And then it turns to like complete body double, her dribbling between the legs. And then they're like back to back. And then she's like, and they're, uh, I don't know what song is playing, but it's really bizarre. It's just like some kind of like hip hop, but kind of like R&B song. And, uh, and like, and then she like bumps him with her butt. She bumps him with her butt. And then, oh, sexy. And Benjamin Brad doesn't look like he's ever played basketball in his life. And then, well, it's hard to play with a fucking huge erection. All right. (laughs) Save it for me. (laughs) I was was a fifth grade DPL champion. All right. And it was hard running around that boner. That's a weird thing. Why did Halle Berry decide to to turn it very sexual in front of these children? Like, I understand you're trying to show them off, but it's just like animal instincts. Guys. Well, okay, fine. Okay. She's Catwoman. What about Tom DeLonge? Why is he acting the way he's acting? He's a fucking DeLong. cop in front of these children. So yes. Tom DeLonge. He's Tom been married to the DeLong. force for too long, all right? It's time for him to put down the badge and pick up a condom. <laughs> Get out the boner. <laughs> Get out the boner. <laughs> Get out the boner. And anyway, so she ends it with like the craziest dunk of all time. And Tom DeLonge's got to understand at this point, something's wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> something's how, wrong. She, because again, Halle Berry has got to be what? Maybe five, eight, five, seven. I don't know how tall oh, Halle Berry is, but the idea that she can leap over him and then land on him, like is some serious, some serious gymnastics. And I think this movie is a product of its time and it benefits that it was made in the mid 2000s because a lot of these kids don't have cell phones. But if this movie were shot today, all these kids would have recorded this and all of the internet would be this woman jumping over this man and basically dunking the ball on a 10 foot rim, which, you know, obviously the proof is there. You hear about a gymnastic cat woman on the news, killing people in banks and, and whatever the <laughs> fuck. They and then, and then immediately tied to this, like there's no, there's no chance. It's a wrap. It's a fucking rap. <laughs> right. Anyway, great scene. Uh, after that, after scenes, they, they, they exert themselves. Uh, she goes home to sleep it all off. And uh, guess what? Fucking bikers are partying again. Like the assholes they are. You know what I mean? And so she opens the window and screams at him. And then it's like, she's had enough. So she goes over there and her pajamas, but she's full. <laughs> she's full. I love that they call her a loser. It's just so stupid. <laughs> she goes over there, full blown Catwoman knocks on the door, and he's like, oh, guys, I don't want you in pajamas, but maybe I will let you in, but it's a private party. She's like, Can you turn it? And she he gets the door shut in her face. She kicks the fucking door down. She comes in, fucking pins that guy down with her leg, then grabs the beer tap off the keg and sprays it into one of the speakers. And they're like, Whoa! And then she's like, Ah! And she sprays it into another one, and it's like, all right, that takes care of that. Except there's like 19 bikers in here who deserve who would try to kick your ass at some point. You'd win, but and they know where you live. Also true. Yeah. Also but a big problem. Can, can I? Can we stop for a second? This you guy's a, this guy's apartment is a loft. Is a is a loft with a bar, a stage, 
and gigantic speakers. Yeah. And PAs hanging from the ceiling. PAs. Like, Andy, those have, what, like five to a thousand dollars a piece of just fucking, <laughs> yeah. like, actual industrial it's a venue. grade. It's a it's venue. A venue. <laughs> it's a music venue. And Halle Berry, so, so we have two options here, guys. Either one, Halle Berry just tried to shut down a local music venue. Or two, she's the only person in this neighborhood that has an issue with the fucking, this guy <laughs> having mega amplifiers in his apartment. Is there no one else? Like the cops have never been called. Also, can you call the cops? It's like three o'clock in the morning. This is a great point that I hadn't thought about. Like, what if this place is just a venue? What if she lives next to a that's bar? Insane. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah, all right, the, that's you chose this place. You knew there was a bar there. Yeah, it was like four thirty yeah. in the morning, though. I mean, you guys are yeah, making I mean, up times. There's no way to know what time it is. Yeah. yeah, she looked no, at the clock. Showed what she looked at the clock. Yeah. Oh, did it they? was three thirty. Yeah, I want. I want. <laughs> I want at the first time that she got woken up, she looked at the clock and it said three thirty. I don't know if it's right, but no time. one knows what time this generic city is open till. Also you true. Know? San Francisco two a.m., but New York four a.m. City, city that never sleeps. And- I don't know. That, so anyway, she comes home and she's feeling herself. You know what I mean? She's sowing some wild cat woman oats. And that's when she's like, you know what? Time to go full bore into being a cat. So she oh, tears out her. She gets, she opens up the, the, the outfit made of leather that was given to her by Lois Griffin and the coworker. She cuts her hair super short. She puts on crazy eyeshadow and some bright red lipstick. And she goes out and she's like, meow, and steals the guy's bike. And from upstairs, you hear the guy go, my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Again, they know where she lives. Mm-hmm. And I understand it was impressive kicking down the door and pinning the guy with your leg. There's still a reckoning coming whoa, at some point. Whoa, 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 whoa. But, but for her. she has like a haircut now. She she used some of that lightning gel and, and right. her hair is like kind of orange gel. now. <laughs> Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I guess that's true. That's true. Uh, that's true. How did, did I miss something? How did she steal the bike? She just got she just, on. Just, oh, the keys were there. These this biker gang that parties in that apartment, they're so well known this that like gone. nobody would constantly, nobody would think to fuck. Okay, with the Constance gang, you know what mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. But there, but there is a line leading up to it of her like time to take control of my destiny or like a line something like that. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. And great. then she like steals a bike, <laughs> and it's like, in what like what, how does how does theft of a vehicle? Well, mean like, that this is who you're becoming now like but i don't like, know this, this is where they they were like okay what does catwoman do oh she like steals shit all right let's yeah. let's mm-hmm. now double down on that and then she goes and steals some diamonds cool yeah. so yeah she takes the bike and she rides back to where lois griffin collapsed and she's like i'm gonna steal this necklace and as she's looking at the necklace she sees two other dudes inside already stealing from the just place. shotgunning and stuff and so she's like the fuck is this she goes in there and starts cat creeping around up on the ceiling or whatever and then she jumps down and like says something to the fucking guy and he turns with the shotgun yeah 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 i feel like that's a line we've heard a lot with anything to do with cats and this is the worst delivery i've ever heard in my entire well they used to uh, julie newmar used to say it all the time or like the eartha kit used to say it all the time back it 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 sounded dumb when she said it and somehow this is dumber so good Halle Berry. And then they try to Crushing. unload on her with these sawed off shotguns. Yeah. Like these two dudes are trying to just pump her full of lead because they shoot at the same spot about 10 times each. But it doesn't work. And at one point she rides one of, one of them like a boogie board, just like yeah. fucking <laughs> like right across the room. That's terrible. Uh, so yeah, she just beats the shit out of all of them. Yeah, but I, one thing I really wanted to do was like, I, I want to watch this scene on my computer so I could pause appropriately because the HBO uh, Max app on PS4 doesn't work that great when you pause and shit. But when she, after she rides to do like a boogie board and she's in the corner room, looks at the other guy and she dives and like dives underneath his legs and like pops back up. But during that mid dive, um, just all sense of what the human body and skeleton is capable of just loses all like concept of that and like her cats. her neck is like cats. exactly tim exactly and this is where we get some of these cat uh powers popping in because her head is in a position that there's no human body's uh, capable of doing so and i really want to just pause to that moment and see that terrible cgi because anytime this movie does cgi body halle berry it's really fascinating to look at it's really I'm look i i open it's a good episode. word I'm clicking i'm clicking around on it yeah, I'm it's actually, which I'm part the same uh uh after she boogie boards the move immediately after that because i tried pausing i tried pausing after that and she kind of like jumps towards the other guy in the corner of the room and dives underneath his legs but in the mid of in the midst of her dive it's cgi body halle berry 
and it's like supposed to be too fast so you're not supposed to notice how bad the cgi is but sure her, her head is like her head is like <laughs> it was not bad yet. Shit, it's, not. it's really weird man it's the cgi in this movie I, I i'm shocked that we went this long and i don't think any of us have mentioned the buildings the, the amount of times oh, we yeah, get the crazy yeah, establishing right. shots the where we go in. And I will say, it's fucking horrible. It is some of the worst CGI I've ever seen when it's super far. But the transition from it being CGI to a real building, I couldn't find the transition. It just happened. And all of a sudden, it's like the camera's zooming in and comes in. I'm like, oh, this is real what now. What a movie. What a yeah, man. What a spit off, dude. Kill the game. He was ahead of his time. He was ahead mm-hmm. of his time. Andy, how close am I to the scene that you're talking about? Uh, I think you're a little too early. Too early? You're a little too early. Yeah, a little too early. Uh, I'm a little bit ahead of you, Kevin. I'm letting it go. She's kicking some people. She's doing some sweeps. She's doing some Mortal Kombat kind of crap. Oh, I think the boogie board is about to happen. Switch to her hair also sucks, man. Why'd she what? cut her hair that no, way, No, that looks cool. I mean, her long I hair was her hair. No, her hair too. sucks. Her this long like hair was like much Some of the cooler, worst dude. hair we've seen in a superhero movie ever. And that includes all wigs. Catwoman has been portrayed portrayed in live action by more actors than any other comic book villain. Do you think this was her real hair, the long hair, and then they cut it short, or do you think the short was like only the ever real one? So oh, there's look, the boogie board time right here. Boogie board time right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then right here is like CG jump through the legs, right? But if you like pause as she's jumping, I don't know. This guy has to stand up first. See right here. Watch, watch, watch. Boogie board or like like all of this. Oh yeah. Her neck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, Andy, this is fantastic. That's a great poll, Andy. That's a great you, poll. <laughs> you paused perfectly. Kevin. Yeah, that was it. That was that was the moment right there. Wow. <laughs> Again, like her skull is sitting like in, almost in the middle of her back. Like it's such a weird <laughs> angle that it's at. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um so she that all this happens she takes out the guys but then she also takes their jewels and the jewels that were there uh she wakes up the next morning sees the jewels all over the bed kind of has remorse uh puts them all in a bag except for one one giant necklace um then meanwhile at the diamond heist benjamin bratt's there investigating the entire thing um there's in the way we open on that necklace in the woman's like it's you know one of a kind you know very you know, everybody knows this fucking necklace if you see this necklace today he's like all right fuck, fucking jesus and then <laughs> fuck <laughs> fuck that was, that was a necklace fuck, i guess okay, man. Okay. You Shit, watch by. uh then one of the other people finds the bag and it says sorry on it and it's got a bunch of cupcakes next to it and she's like oh they brought it back sorry we got but, it here. but before the, but before that greg we get such a great moment between two off-camera people going what about cat broad what if oh, we call yeah, her yeah. cat something it's like ah oh, that tip that's just so terrible dude. with this taken care of and benjamin bratt now in possession of all that stuff Catwoman or halle berry herself because we will find out there are two different people competing inside of her body right it's like wait sense. a second this midnight and the cat lady probably know more than they were letting on about so she goes back there and six <clears> feet under a woman's like oh look who's back and like here you go and like you probably noticed you can jump really high and kick and shit and she's like you're one of the many cat women. She gives her the fucking book of cat women throughout the ages. Uh, as we've talked about, yeah, there it is. This is when the Michelle Pfeiffer uh, image Fuck gets put out there. Fuck this scene. Fuck this scene. The whole scene. reason we're fucking so going I can't, I can't. I never saw the Michelle Pfeiffer image. It's right Which, there. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Sorry. God, and it's what a yeah, you're, you're, setting you're, thing. You're fucking Catwoman. How did I become Catwoman? What do you remember from last night? Nothing. And then she starts piecing it together. I'm like, oh, I, I, I got killed. I, you died. I, Midnight knew you were going to die and did the test. And that's how they knew you were worthy of the cat powers. And now you need to use them to stop everything. Yeah, Nick. So wait, she had our, this is the second time she had come back, right? Right. This is, well, this is the first time she's come back. It's her second time at the house. Second time at the house. And so Francis McDonald or whatever, the, the woman from uh, Six Feet Under, was just like, I'm going to go let this crazy person think she's fucking going insane for an entire day until she comes back. And then I'm going to tell her she's got these cat powers. Isn't that always the way? You know, you can't, you, she, you know, something's up. You can't tell them if experience it. The woman fucking rubbed catnip on her face <laughs> like it was going to give her the best orgasm of her life. And, and, and the, the old lady's like, I don't know. Jury's still out as to whether or not she's a super cat. And then a, a day later, she's like, you know what? I think you're right. Now is the time to tell you. Not before I unleashed you on New York City and you robbed a place and almost killed two dudes. Now let's prep you for this. It's but, such bad writing. But even then, she didn't have enough information. So she laid a Google searches to find more. And she searches what she for search? cats, cats. Dot space women. <laughs> <laughs> 
like, oh my God. What the hell? <laughs> it's so good, guys. It's so good. Uh, I'm glad so we watched this. Then she starts coming back to her. She remembers the, you know, thug, uh, the second in command thug that chased her down the, the tube or whatever. So she's like, I'll follow him, find out why I had to die. Uh, she dresses up as Catwoman and then starts following him. And, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Well, we, yeah, no, this is the debut of the Catwoman suit, right? She had already worn the leather stuff the night before, but it wasn't which, a full blown Catwoman which, outfit. This by is the, the full way, blown the, Catwoman outfit. The leather outfit, totally acceptable. Totally a find. I'm like, cool. She has that. She put the, the little uh, face mask, mask on, on that she stole. I was like, oh, this is cool. It's a really fun nod to like the old school Catwoman of the 1966 show. I was totally fine with that. I'm like, this is cool. This, this works kind of as a costume. But man, Pilaf was like, no. Halle Berry has, is a multifaceted actor, but instead of using any of those skills, we just want to show off as much of her fucking bare midriff as humanly possible. And, her back. and oh, by the way, when she turns around, don't forget her back. Again, this would have been number moment number two where I'd be like, I don't, I'm, I'm out. I'm not going to do this movie again ever. Andy, hit me with any kind of podcast within a podcast song for me. It's a podcast within a podcast hosted by Gregory Miller. Welcome to another podcast within the podcast. This is the best bat suit. We, we always rank the hero suit. We need to rank the cat woman costume on the list. Currently, best bat suits look like this. Number one, Phantasm. Number two, Batman Returns. Number three, Batman Forever Normal. Number four, 1989 Batman. Number five, Batman and Robin. Number six, Sonar Suit, Batman Forever. Number seven, 66 Bat Suit. And number eight, Batman uh, Batman and Robin Ice Suits are tied for last place right now. Yeah, they where were do we want to put Those are real bad. Yeah. Where do we want to put the cat woman outfit here that Halle Berry rocks? It's dead last. It's really bad. It's <laughs> terrible. Yeah, it's it's definitely it's, dead last. But something I just noticed are her her fingernails. Is that the, the necklace? The That's the necklace. Yeah. That's okay, the got necklace. It, got it. That's so why when Benjamin Brant picks one up, he's like, "Oh, this is the thing from the necklace." I was with you where I thought the necklace itself she's going to wear it on a date or something, mm-hmm. and he's going to put it together that way. And then I was like, "Uh oh." Uh, it's I, it's I just that with the co- sorry. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, I don't. Ha- I mean, uh, the suit's silly. But I don't hate it the way I hate Batman and Robin's ice suit or the sonar suit from Batman Forever. I here's, do think if thing, we were Greg, voting from the bottom up, I wouldn't. I would put sixty six bat suit ahead of it. Yeah, Timmy. I I, I don't know if we have enough podcasts within the podcast here. I think that there, we've already had previous Catwoman. I'd say we rank <gasps> her against the Catwoman suits because we got some others coming up. Too. Meow. <laughs> God, I hate you guys so much. Is that I'm, the intro? I'm of the, uh, meow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please stop doing it. No. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Cat Scratch Fever, there it is. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cat Scratch Fever, the podcast within a podcast. We rank all the Catwoman universe outfits yeah, of Catwoman in the movies of the Batman movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so far, ladies and gentlemen, by default, Michelle Pfeiffer has been number one on Cat Scratch Fever. No. Nope. Nope. Oh, sure. Okay, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we didn't rank them. They've never been ranked. About to, first about so, 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 all right. So, so now we have to, All right. You're right. How many times do I have to fucking say you're right, Tim? Three more times, Greg. Time. Thank One you. One more time. You're right, Tim. God damn it. Uh, where do we want to... So, let's... We got to start from the scratch. We got 66. We got Michelle Pfeiffer. We got the, the, Halle Berry. The cap scratch. The cap scratch. <laughs> scratch. I love this show. <laughs> I hate what we do here. <laughs> all right. So, I think the best suit we've seen so far is Michelle Pfeiffer. I agree. Okay. I concur. It goes Michelle Pfeiffer, then the 66, then Catwoman from Halle Berry. I agree, but I, I want to say I, that they're all terrible. What? I'm not I happy agree with any with of them. With that ranking. Ah, oh, damn. This song is written by Ted Nugent. Fuck. <laughs> I just no. kind of realized it. Ted Nugent sucks. Is he a bad yeah. guy? I, he's oh yeah, he's awful, dude. <laughs> he's like really, really, <laughs> he's a shitty fuck. Damn it! I'll get you a better cat song for next time. Maybe Wait, President okay. of the United States. No, of it's good. no, it's great because I looked at the tabs and I was like, oh, I can learn to play this on guitar. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, okay and cool. it's really really easy, go. but it's fucking Ted Nugent sucks. There we go. Oh, I think oh, we got the ranking Kevin. already, right? Michelle Pfeiffer from Batman Returns, number up. one. Number two, uh, Catwoman from 66, who was not pictured here, but you get the idea. And then number three, Catwoman oh. from the movie Catwoman. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's still me then, right? Because the show has to keep going. Uh, so, uh, Jesus Christ. 
What do we just do? Oh, she goes after the guy, the thug who killed her. Fuck, we got to start moving faster. I got a PS I love you in an hour. Uh, no, you're already working on it. Good job, Andy. Uh, so yeah, I she goes after that guy. She follows him around. He does a bunch of shit. And he's like walking down alleyways and crap. And she's being a cat above him. Uh, he goes into like a club. She comes into the club. She orders a, uh, a white Russian. Hold the Kahlua. Hold the rum. Hold the vo- whatever. Just, just cream. <laughs> Yes, yeah, she Why? does. She just got milk because she's a cat. She's a cat. Andy. <laughs> she's a cat. Stupid. And then, and then he stupid. says cream oh, yes. straight up. And she's like, yeah. Yeah. And, we get and it. he's sitting there thinking like all this is normal. Like he just kind of gives her a look like <laughs> this club, cream, man. People get up. wild in there. You know what I mean? It's like I, when I Tim like, went to that sex museum. What? Yeah. I don't know. It's so stupid. Go Tim ahead. Kind of funny that wasn't a sex Nick. museum. That was the power yeah. exchange. It was a sex club. Yeah. He didn't know that when he went. Remember? Yeah. After after she uh, orders her milk, uh, mm-hmm. would you expect her in this club where she's the only one dressed weird to then kind of steal the show and upstage mm-hmm. everyone else that are th- paid there to dance by going to the center, doing this whole performance, and then doing an insane lunge at uh, one of the bad guys? So, uh, no, that's not my first expectation. My first expectation was that they stopped her at the door and were like, why are you wearing a costume? Why are you dressed like that? Nobody asks. It's just normal in Gotham, not Gotham City or wherever the fuck we are, that people just randomly walk around with cat helmets on. Mm-hmm. Well, that's I, thing number I, one. I think that maybe they thought, oh, she was hired. This is like a hired performer for this like dance you're, thing. You're and she also knows how to use a whip because we forgot to mention that she learned how to use a whip. She realized, oh, I could use this whip. I could use whips in the future when she used the the beer thing. beer dispenser the from the yeah, yeah the the tap um yeah. i also love that she has a um a moment where she she whips the upper balcony and then pulls herself and then swings yeah over onto the guy and yeah. physically it's just not even it doesn't even look close to possible with how she does it <laughs> it doesn't even look close to like like you would just jump off and you're and you, you would just land on the foot below you and then walk over to the guy um i feel like they just they tried to make this character as unlikable as humanly possible and they completely succeeded with catwoman it's just you at one point you're like she's crazy first off second off they they try to skate the line between her being a bad guy and a good guy and it doesn't work at all (laughs) it just it completely falls apart we're toward the end where you're like i don't care who wins this fight between her and, and clayface sharon stone or whatever the fuck we're calling her it's it's just deplorable wow uh, as Nick said, though, that's what happens. There it is. Wait, I just for a second want to bring to attention this one scene where she's done this little dance, and now she walks over to this guy and just starts whipping people like to clear the path, and it's just like like she it's whips like this guy. Him, yeah, this is terrifying. Him, um, like a dude has to tuck and roll. <laughs> To get out of the way, <laughs> in a club. And just, yeah, and nobody's like, "Oh, hey, um, stop." You know, when you go to a club like this, though, you know that's possible. Uh, also, no, one not, more, one more wait, scene I want to bring attention to, which is just terrible editing of like, "Oh, they're almost gonna kiss," and then she kicks him out of the place. What happened in the in, in between time? She dra- Did she like she drag dragged him? his ass to the fucking door. Yeah, yeah she's she counting. So the whole yeah. point of her finding this guy was that she couldn't remember what was going on in the building. Why did night, you try right? to kill me? Yeah, exactly. Right. And he's like, I just do what the boss says. The boss said to kill you. I killed you. Right. And she's and like, so, I'm going to go after the boss now and figure that out. But she doesn't remember what happened, right? Because if mm. she did remember what happened, she would remember that it was clearly a female voice giving the orders. And that voice is her boss, not the guy. It's Sharon Stone. So this whole movie, the, all the, all of these things that happen up until the point where she confronts Sharon Stone, which she could have done way e- earlier, is predicated on her cat power sort of not letting her remember exact mm. details of what happened. But she does remember she went to the, the toxic waste dump slash chemical facility, right? Mm. It's very yeah. It was confusing for me because I rolled yeah, it back. No, the back. I was like, I don't, thing, I don't know how we got here. How does she remember to – like how does she remember that the, the stuff's poison and her friend shouldn't use it? I don't know. That's a good question. Mean, you know, it's just a ride. Mm-hmm. This is what uh, they Cats wanted to do. Remember what they experience. need to remember most. Exactly. It's a this terrible is an experience. Ride. And I hate Tim for making me do this. I love it. Well, I agree. You didn't with do that. it, though, Kevin. You didn't finish it. It's a great point. Oh, Tim's whipping. Look at Tim's got a whip. Wow. 
Man. Tim must be a cat man. He's the cat <laughs> <laughs> Tim, walk on top. Walk on top of your chairs, Tim. Um, so she, <laughs> she, so she goes to the guy's house, the leader's house. He's not there though. Sharon Stone is. Sharon Stone acts like this is all new information to her that you know mm. this is happening and the cream's bad and that you know he's a bad guy or whatever. Um, she gives up her guy. She's like, hey, here's his planner. He's at the opera tonight or whatever the fuck it is, some performance thing. And she's and how do I get in contact with you? I'll call you. I don't have a phone. She gives her a phone, which Halle Berry promptly puts very close to her vagina. And then she runs out. That's where I keep my phone. You, you missed the small part where where she I don't I didn't goes, miss anything. I assure you I don't miss anything about this movie. She goes to find like she goes back to the facility where she got poisoned and finds the scientist who was like, I can't do this anymore dead with three bullet wounds maybe but like very little blood and then like they think that she killed him meow yep. <laughs> meow i was still hearing uh, echo by the way just oh, is this still happening? Shit, I'm sorry. yeah i'm still hearing that i'm trying i i don't know why it's happening let me see she confronts the guy at the opera uh and is like you suck and scratches his face um but then cops start moving in before she can get the real information or whatever the fuck out of him. He he plays dumb, but he's actually not playing dumb. He is dumb. Um, cops move in. <laughs> she jumps down. She runs on stage. Benjamin Bratt pursues. Uh, she runs. She scales up into the rafters. He goes up there. We get this very Catwoman versus Batman kind of thing going up there of Benjamin Bratt, the police officer versus her. Andy, and, did this remind you at all of Mission Impossible Rogue Nation? when they're fighting in the rafters of a theater yeah. and it was equally as thrilling. Yeah. Reminds me of back to the future. Remember that when back to the future too, when Marty's got to crawl across the top of it. Yeah. Did we do back to the future interview? No. Yeah, we yeah. did. Did we? Sure did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all a fucking blur, man. It is all a fucking blur. <laughs> well, the two out of five of us forgot. <laughs> That's a great movie. I didn't they forget. Well. It sounded right. I just needed Tim, it. I just, yeah, no, we did. we did. When are we going to do in review and review where we talk about all the in review series we've done and rank them? Hopefully. Greg never. has to do the plot. But though. I'm never going to say never. No, well, uh, then he would do the highlights of the craziest things that happened in those in reviews. So he ki uh, Catwoman kisses Benjamin Bratt on the cheek and also is like all super sexual with him. And he's very much like, I'm taken, lady. And there's this whole handcuff thing that she keeps getting in and out of. And Is he taken? Yeah. Because that's the other question I'd have. He's been on half a date with this person so far. They he spent knows. like a date it, together. It's a connection. Yeah, but like they, they have it. Like it's happening. But, but on half like, a date, the only thing that he really, really knows about her right now is her handwriting on this cup that says sorry. There's the scene where there's the bag that also says sorry in the same handwriting. Yeah, and no, it takes he it. didn't figure it out. Like he didn't just no, at no. that moment look and go, oh shit, it's clearly her. It yeah. took a whole bunch of other things to happen for him mm -hmm. to put it together. Well, then they have it analyzed. <laughs> we don't know the analysis scene is one of the most job oh, dropping God. things in cinema oh, history. God. Of Can the scientists, the scientists looking at both of them and going, "Now look at the why here. It's aggressive. Two it's different confident. people. Well, uh, two the different other, people. the other why. This person would never do. It. <laughs> yeah, like, th I, this isn't an exact science." But let me give you like some yeah. rules and things that we figured I can out. I tell you where this person lives right this now. Woman, you let me bad analyze bitch. this. This whoever wrote this, <laughs> and then he has the bad bitch. This you one, put these no. two girls together, and man, you're in for a party. You're in for a party, <laughs> man. I'd be like this. You gotta get out of this fucking lab, more man. You made all that shit up. You made all that shit up. Uh, from there, then he, Benjamin Bratt goes on a date with uh, Patience, not Catwoman, right? <laughs> and uh, and they go to sushi, and then she's obsessed with the fish. And then they deliver the sushi, and she or she just keeps eating the raw fish off of the pieces, the sushi, which uh, we've all done. There. It's like a child, yeah, but not that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, they you know flirt around or whatever and then they go outside and it's gonna rain so she gets all freaked out and then they kiss in the, like a flower a depot and then they go home and they fuck man they just get it on really hates the rain really like hates a, the rain cause she's a cat guys you know, ah, ah, rain. Rain. And, and then so, Benjamin Brad finds all the proof there yeah yeah in the middle of the night he gets up and to get like a glass of water or get a bottle of water actually and uh, he finds the diamond tipped uh, thing from the necklace that's actually now one of Catwoman's claws and he finds there's it, a uh, bunch of like there's a bunch of like hairballs and there's a bunch of like uh, there's like scratching posts, fish skeletons. <laughs> there's just <laughs> a giant post that says I am Catwoman just <laughs> on the top of her bed, pointing down at her. 
Uh, so he grabs a glass, leaves. He leaves a note, like something came up. He bounces. Uh, she wakes up to the phone call from Sharon Stone, who's like, you need to come over here. Shit's getting real or whatever. Uh, Benjamin Brack goes to the police station and using not fingerprint technology, lip print technology, they are able to match both the kiss from Catwoman to the glass from Patience that they are the same person. Uh, Cat- Patience is Catwoman. Meanwhile, at uh, Sharon Stone's lair, uh she gets there and she's like or catwoman gets there and sharon Stone's like you were right about everything i have all the evidence you need it's just on the other side of that desk and catwoman walks in there and it's her mur- it's the murdered husband the, her boss or whatever and this is the reveal that sharon stone's actually the bad guy in charge of all this shit oh, oh my so god nice. you know what i mean and it's surprising and, uh, to everyone except everyone the only exactly. person who's surprised by this is halle berry that's good writing right there way to go <laughs> And so, yeah, they, she's like, uh, and she was, he's got, he's been scratched to death and gunshot wounds. And she tosses the gun to Halle Berry and she grabs it. She's like, oh, and I, at first I would just immediately drop it. Number one, number two, there's no fingerprints on this. I'm wearing gloves. Uh, but uh, it doesn't <laughs> there's matter. Zero, there's, like, there's literally zero proof that I'm here right now. <laughs> see ya. Uh, Sharon Stone hits the button. All the security rushes in. The cops run in. They see her with the gun. Catwoman flees. She gets away, but on her way out, she grabs Sharon Stone's sweatsuit. Uh, she changes into that. She walks home as per normal, kind of being afraid of the cops, though. Uh, then she gets home, and Benjamin Bratt's already there because she's wasted a whole bunch of time getting home, trying to stay you know, stealthy, but they already knew. And he's like, I bet you could get out of these cuffs if you wanted to. She goes, if I wanted to. And so he takes her into fucking jail. <laughs> and he puts her in lockup. You know what I mean? And he's like, we're going to throw the book at you, patience. And she's like, listen, you know me. And you." And he's like, the evidence points to you. And she's like, but when you met me, what did you see? And he's like, I saw a girl trying to save a cat. She's like, no, you didn't. You saw a suicidal person. You, the, All the evidence pointed to me being suicidal, but I wasn't. And he's like, fuck, that's a good point. But all the evidence is here. And she's like, no, it's not that. They know the thing is going to turn you to, it's going to kill you. And it's going to turn you to stone and shit. And like, we, well, they don't know that part, but you know what I mean? It's happening. And he's like, fuck, but I can't prove it, but I'll try to prove it. And so he puts her back in a lockup and he leaves. And then who shows up? Fucking Midnight. Midnight shows up and is like, you stupid idiot. You're a cat. Remember, you can slide through things like I slide through things. And she's like, fuck, you're right. And she's like, Lassie would have brought a, a fucking saw or some shit. But she's like, I can I can slink right out of this thing. And she goes, bloop, bloop, bloop. She slinks out of the thing and then she leaves the jail and she's like her trying head, to get out of her jail. Her head looks like it kind of like squishes in between. Oh, it weird. looks like Professor, uh, uh, or not Professor, Senator Kelly from X-Men. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yep. Uh, so she almost gets caught though, and she's like, "Oh no!" So she jumps out a window and does like the full cat flip and lands in front of a jaguar that comes up and <laughs> stops in time, but still boop, bumps her boot. Bumps her butt. Looks bumps really, really butt. terrible. Too. The, bump, the, flip, the flip CGI looked awful as well. It was yeah. great. Yeah. And so uh, the she steals the car. She's like, "Oh, jaguar!" Like this to the thing. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's like, you know what I mean? That like, was another part. Yeah, her rubbing the fucking jaguar like thing in the front of the car I was just like why dude why like she made it what cats why, do she cats might as well against again, each other she no she might as well have again have said like oh, what a perfect car like she might have like it's just There's like definitely a take on. where she did yeah you're right you're right <laughs> there's definitely a take where she did um so she steals the car and takes off um sharon stone meanwhile is like still holding a board meeting of like hey my husband's dead but he wanted he would have wanted us to launch this so we're launching it everybody we're launching this fucking cream. Yeah, everybody's happy. Then you go to, uh, we got to hit these midnight deliveries, everybody. So they're all loading this shit in the, in the middle of the city to get it out across the world just from these trucks, whatever. So they're loading up the trucks. And meanwhile, Catwoman shows up and she's like, not on my meowch. And she walks around. And she takes <laughs> <What? laughs> my meowch. <laughs> not what that- I couldn't figure out a cat pun for watch. So I just said right. meowch. Yeah. I, I love and it. So, she takes chains and hooks them up to all the drive trains of these uh, vehicles. And then she grabs another big rig and she hacks, hooks over that one. And then they're like, all right, you're ready to go. You know, like that kind of thing. She roars out first and just fucks all these trucks up. Just poof, 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 and breaks them. It's like, oh my God, what the fuck's going on? And it's like, oh, I'm Catwoman. Meowch. And so she's there and that's not good. And meanwhile, in, in the second plane of action, uh, Benjamin Bratt, uh, Tom DeLong, he's up there and he's like, Tom listen, uh, I just got He's doing the Columbo. Like, I just got a few more questions to ask you, Sharon Stone. And he's like, none of this Whoa. checks out, actually. And I think you did this and you're the bad guy. And she's like, well, maybe I am the bad guy, and, and, but you can't prove it. And he's like, I can now. You just said you were the bad guy. And I, and I was like, no, Holy I'm pretty hell. sure I did it. I'm pretty sure I did it, and that wouldn't hold up in court with what you're talking about right now. You need evidence for this kind of thing, you stupid moron. And while they're having this argument, I think Catwoman shows up, right? And Catwoman's like, meow. 
And uh, then, oh, by the no, way, she, uh, I mean, she shoots him. She shoots him. She shoots him before Catwoman gets there? I yeah. can't remember. Yeah, she shoots him. And this is my favorite, like, whip scene is the idea that she shoots him. He's on the ground and she's like, go say hi to fucking whatever in hell. I don't know the fuck. But the like the close up of the gun and then the CGI whip wraps around this, the gun and it looks so bad. It reminds you of like Jumanji era CG. Um, and I know that's like so weird and so specific, but the way that the, the uh, Kevin, if you could just find this scene of just uh, the I'm whip, working on it, the whip wrapping around the pistol, it looks so bad and funny. Like it's, it's a, it was an audible laugh from me. Great moment. But Great I think moment. I'm close. I think, yeah, I'm close. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, switch to, while you figure that out, I'll just keep it going a little bit. All right. Don't worry about it. Uh, Sharon Stone. Then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm still sorry>. <laughs> 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 it looks so bad. Ready? It looks so terrible, man. Uh, Tom DeLonge gets helped out by uh, Catwoman. He's bleeding. They're taking like back roads and hiding a little bit here and there and doing all this different stuff. Uh, eventually, though, it's like you got to leave. Oh, some guy showed up. The other bad guy showed up, right? And like he got knocked out or shot God, or some bad. shit. That's and so bad. then uh, he's like, you got to leave me. And then Catwoman and Sharon Stone go and fight upstairs. And, you know, Sharon Stone invulnerable to punches until she gets punched a lot. So she gets yeah. punched a lot, and that makes her face start looking like Voldemort. She gets scratched. Like, she, yeah. like, that woman specifically, like, does a claw kind of maneuver. Gotcha. And that fucks up the, the marble, like, skin that she has sort of grown into and now. so he, he, as usual like the cat was just getting the shit kicked out of her and like this is like over sharon stone's like got her on the broken glass and they like, got this pole she keeps poking her in the tummy with and, and it's like, like cg Catwoman with her back against the thing totally totally and, and then terrible. at the last second though she uh, Catwoman decides to punch harder and pulls herself out jumps over the thing is like ah, i'm fucking got nine no. lives or some shit no no, no dude. it's 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 sharon stone's looking at her and she goes game over and then catwoman goes it's overtime <laughs> what the hell right. great. not even a cat pun great not even writing. Really cats. you're fucking dead inside crazy, Tim. It's great writing. Hey, it's a basketball pun though greg or uh uh tim it's a basketball she right. jumps out she starts fucking kicking her she sharon stone falls out the window and holds on and she's not gonna die but then she's she's like she's fine she's got it uh but then she looks at the glass and sees her face is all fucked up and she falls and then Catwoman grabs her, but she can't or that actually Catwoman already grabbed her and then she sees her face and she kinda lets go. And she tumbles down and smashes into her logo or whatever. The way she spins, dead. man. When Sharon Stone falls and is a free fall. <laughs> it really <laughs> did you see how we got tagged in that tweet from that um it, it was an episode of KF Podcast where we went through the whole Disney lineup that was being put on Disney Plus, and there was that uh Benji the dog. And there's that part in the Benji trailer where the Jaguar, the cougar goes like flying off the cliff and spins. That's yeah, what yeah. Sharon Stone reminds you of here because like, first off her body falls really like kind of gracefully, but then they cut to a really, really fast spin of her just like tumbling in the fastest motion. And it's just, it's so fucking comedically great. Yeah, here it is, Kevin. I love, I love this because it's such a normal fall. And then. <laughs> 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 just, rewind, just rewind that again it's just like you've gotta uh, you've it, gotta it, you know make this look a little bit more graceful man it's just so funny dude it's it's <laughs> why why because they did this. i know exactly <laughs> why tim do you know why no because like, i don't think that's cg i think that they threw a dummy well, that's a dummy that's no, a dummy yeah, no, no i know yeah, but yeah, like yeah. that's why when you throw a dummy like if you toss it the wrong way, <sighs> it'll fl like spin like this, and Fuck. it's just one of those things that like people didn't know what they're doing. And they only wanted to do it once, and they nailed so it. So ridiculous! It reminds me of so, my youth. Oh, Sharon Stone's dead. Benjamin Bratt makes his way back to Catwoman. Is like, hey, just so you know, if patience can get back, I mean, we're gonna call it bring this whole operation down. If people flip on Sharon Stone's dead body, uh, so if you if patience can get back in her cell, will be pretty hard proof that there's no cat or that she's not Catwoman, even though she's been gone from the cell for like at least three hours like i'm yeah. sure somebody, somebody else noticed, but nobody else has to have noticed that she's gone and she's like hi you got it and so 
that she bounces and then we get like as this all wraps up you know uh patients talking and explaining over in vo what's going on and uh lois griffin is now happily married to the doctor and eating strawberries um tom DeLong is has an arm in a sling and is waiting for catwoman at the gregorio's but he's got a note from her and she's like i'm good sometimes sometimes i'm really good sometimes and i'm bad bad, bad as i want to be bad, but like bad, right bad. now i just gotta go be me or whatever and then we get the cg of her walking along the top of the building and then she jumps and that's fine fucking catwoman finally wow whips across the number one <laughs> number one <laughs> haiku and review baby let's go i'm so tired seven syllables in the middle i didn't talk it was all great you need five uh, press the last line okay, if you're not poetic no need to fret it haikus don't need to rhyme haiku in review haiku in review you go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your review in haiku form just like dustin perrier did catwoman not great. Apparently, cats can ball out. Hoobastank still slaps. Yes. Hell yeah, it does. Daniel Edmund says, this is appalling. It's a true catastrophe. Oh my Go God. fuck herself, Tim. Wow. Ah, very good. Very good. Wow. Liz and Dakota Lawson say, that was bad. So bad. So, so very, very bad. I miss bat nipples. Spoopy. Nope. Nope. Spoopy Ghost nope. says, camera <laughs> moving, a million cuts per fight scene. Why so zoomed in, guys? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. And finally, I... and Andrew Feisner says, meow, 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 meow. This movie hurts me. Yeah. Sure. I got here, here, it. I got here's it. The, the big question to you guys. Is this worse or more entertaining than Batman and Robin? And here's where we are to rank the Batman theatrically released movies number one currently batman 89 number two batman mask of the phantasm number three batman returns number four batman forever number five batman and robin and number six batman 66 it's a good question Nick. It's a because good i question. had because there at a certain point the, did this movie for you guys tip over into so absurd that it became entertaining no yes no no can we see the list kevin or is that not possible oh yes i'm sorry uh I think that so many of these movies are so bad in so many different ways that this one is is truly bad. And this one, I, I think it's, we can all agree, it's the worst. But at some point, I think that it becomes entertaining. And I think that it doesn't do a bad job about something I care about the way that the Batman movies so far have done a bad job with things that I care about. I don't care about this Catwoman. This is not DC's Catwoman. This is just some weird, weird fucking movie yeah. that makes bizarre decisions like... That spinning of the person falling out the window made me laugh harder and brought me more joy than anything so far. I know what you're saying, Tim. I know what you're saying. We have a tendency here to, you know, obviously shit on movies uh, when they're very, very bad. But sometimes we we feel disappointment when we know that an opportunity was there and it wasn't it. it they didn't, you know, seize the, uh, the, the moment, you know, and make sure, sure. something great out of something that we wish could have been great. But with this, um, I, I I don't think we can give it the entertaining nod just because it is like I feel like we're rewarding it for being as terrible as it is and it being razzied up and all that shit. I think this is easily the final or the last one. Uh, this is number seven for me. And I, I agree with you sense. because I think that there has to be sanctity. There has to be some type of consistency of thought when it comes to this. And we are yeah. ranking these movies by quality. This yeah. is the last. This is number seven. Uh, I think that we should do what we've done time before when when movies have been this bad is we, this is number 12 this is dead last oh, wow. it will nothing will ever be this bad i would even nominate this movie as the worst movie we've done in an in review series that i've been a part of i am well um, i agree with you for the 12th spot i don't also, know that i agree with you about this being the worst that we've done what's worse i can't think of anything origins. off the top of my head no X-Men origins no Wolverine. i it's not it was slightly but that's where better you get than into this. that's where you get into what it could have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those movies, you know, the potential and like what you would have wanted to see and like yeah. Also, I'd like to add that um this is not a Batman movie. Uh and it very loosely is in this universe, but I'm still super offended at Tim and Look, I will punish him. 
Since I'll day one. How are you going to punish him? I said, oh, I don't know. I'm going to find a good one. I want to be surprised. His body or his mind? Day one, I said we were going to do all of the theatrical released ones as listed on the Wikipedia. And it's on the Wikipedia. So I think it's great that we watched this movie, guys, because it reminded me of like when I was done with it, it reminded me of how good life can be. I'm like, wow, I don't have to watch this ever again. I'm Thanks glad I could God say that, that I fully watched it now. I'm glad I could say that. At least. Me too. Did you guys Are get you the know? sense that even the even the filmmakers toward the end of this movie just didn't want to make this movie anymore? Because the third act goes by like that. That fight scene, there's no like there's no moment where uh, Sharon Stone gets away and then we have to, they're just like, let's just. Have them fight for five minutes and be done. Can we all agree on that? Get her out the fucking window. Let's go home. (laughs) Just get the fuck out. Get out of this. So bad. Yeah, I put her. I already put it at number 12. Like, FYI, I already made the list. Thank you. (laughs) You (laughs) You want to send that to me? I'll update it right now. I did. Yeah, I put it in essence. I put it in. Greg, Greg, you're being being oddly quiet here about your thoughts about this movie. Do you you think that it's somehow like high on the list? No. I mean, mean, when when you're all just spitting truth, what is there left to say? It's bad. It's a bad movie. <laughs> there, there it is. We go. There it is. Ladies there it is. and gentlemen, the new <laughs> rankings. Number one, Batman 89. Number two, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Number three, Batman Returns. Number four, Batman Forever. Number five, Batman and Robin. Number six, Batman 66. And number 12, Catwoman. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to add shame on everyone that worked on this. Someone should have stood up and said no. Someone yeah. somewhere should have said something. Yeah. Well, luckily they learned from it and they never made a bad DC movie ever again. Don't even go there, Nick. Uh, We (laughs) are going to be back next week, uh, this week with Conjuring Interview, continuing with uh, Annabelle 2 Creation. Creation. Annabelle Creation. And then next week we'll be back with Batman in review with Batman Begins, baby. Let's go. We deserve this. Is Creation number two? I fucking hate you, Kevin. We're not doing this (laughs) until next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Meow, Kevin's going to punish Tim.